Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Minnesota. Welcome to the opening week of baseball, presented by Burger King. Now that the first win is out of the way, the Twins can go about business this afternoon, trying to pick up their first series win of the year in the final game of the series with the Los Angeles Angels. Beautiful day for baseball here at Target Field. Dick and Burt with you for the series finale, and a good night for the Twins and a good night for their new shortstop. Well, when you have a son four years old at home <laughs> crying because you haven't had a hit yet, you better do something. And that's exactly what Jamie Carroll did yesterday. We've seen some very good defensive plays from Jamie Carroll, but going into last night's ball game, 0 for 13 in his debut as a twin, picked up a double, and then an RBI single later in the ball game. Jamie Carroll at his finest right there with that base hit RBI hit at the right field. What the Twins need is to get a really good start today from their starter, Francisco Liriano. That is not what he gave them in his season opening game in Baltimore. Well, you just wonder what and who, which Liriano will show up here this afternoon. He has outstanding stuff. He struck out the first three batters he faced this year in his opening, opening day start in Baltimore. He's got great fastball. He's got good movement on his fastball. He has a nasty slider. He's got an outstanding changeup. To me, the key is the fastball. Get ahead in the count so the changeup and the slider can even be more effective. But you can't possibly throw 20 pitches an inning and expect to go deep into the ball game. Liriano today, throw strikes, be aggressive in the strike zone. And maybe get some early run support. Chris Parmalee won a spot on this roster with an outstanding spring training, and he got an awfully big hit in the Twins win last night. We'll hear from the Twins' first baseman when we come back. Local Northland Ford dealers. Visit your local Northland Ford dealer or go to NorthlandFord.com. And by Menards. 
Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. Target Field this afternoon, Twins and Angels in the final game of a three-game series. The Twins got their first win last night due in large part to the swing of Chris Parmley. He was allowed to hit against a left-hander with two on and two out, and the Twins down by three. Parmley delivered a big triple that tied the game. He did, and he kind of got off to a slow start, but yesterday really swung him back good. Got the base hit back through the middle. But this pitch right here, this is a two-strike approach, Anthony, where he just drops the barrel of the bat straight down. Nice, short, compact swing. And that's the one thing Parmalee brings is not only can he hit the ball out of the park, but he also brings an approach where he can make contact off tough lefties and do some damage even when he gets behind in the count. That was a great approach to his at-bat. Definitely a guy that Gardy has confidence in, as we saw yesterday, against the playoff contending team. He left Parmalee in the game. Parmalee hit well for Minnesota last fall. Ron Gardner talks about a guy who turned himself into a prospect. You know, you have to work your way into that to, to be, you know, a favorite in the organization. They draft you, but you still have to work yourself into being a big-time prospect. And that's what he did through a lot of hard work at first base, a lot of hard work in the outfield, a lot of hard work with his bat. Um, you know, and he put himself on the radar map by all the hard work, and it paid off. And here he is in the big leagues now and doing a super job for us. Anthony, the great thing about our game, baseball, and the Minnesota Twins organization is you're rewarded for your work and your efforts, and that's what Chris Parmley is. He was not a first-round draft pick, but he worked his way into being a prospect, and now he's the starting first baseman for the Minnesota Twins. His two-run triple tied the game at five. He scored the winning run last night in the Twins' first victory of the season. Francisco Liriano will try to pitch them to a series win next. finally broke the ice in the win column with an impressive comeback win last night. Minnesota now has its sights set on a series win against the Angels. Francisco Liriano looks for a bounce back game at home in a matinee from Minneapolis. It's cool of course but it's absolutely gorgeous here at Target Field for the final game of this series. Francisco Liriano taking it to the mound. Hoping to pitch the Twins to win here today against this Menards batting order. Mycer Asturis, Howie Kendrick, Albert Pujols, Torrey Hunter, Mark Trumbo, the designated hitter, Vernon Wells, Alberto Cayasco, Bobby Wilson, 
and Peter Borges. And it will be Liriano on the mound. Liriano making a second start, his uh, opening day debut for the Twins this year, an 8 to 2 loss to the Baltimore Orioles. He did strike out the side in the first inning. Three of uh, the four strikeouts he had in the four innings he worked. One strike to Asturias. And a base hit to center field. Asturias just his second at bat of the season. And he's in the lineup for the Angels at short and taking over Eric Ibar's leadoff spot as well. Check the Twins out on the field. With uh, pretty much the same lineup as last night, the exception Ben Revere in right field. The defense brought to you by Northland Ford. Infield looks the same with Parmalee at first, Valencia in the other corner, and Maurer catching the uh, day game after the night game. And Revere bringing his speed into the uh, lineup in right field in place of Ryan Doman. Here's Howie Kendrick. Inside, ball one. Yeah, Kendrick showing butt right there. Danny Valencia playing in on the grass. Take the punt away. Asturias at first base, not like Ibar. He's not as quick. Nine stolen bases last year, but he was caught six times. Angels very athletic club. They like to run. Fly ball. Short center field. Span puts it away, one down. And this is what Liriano needs some right there, some quick outs. Make it happen early. Asturias on the second pitch, base hit. Second pitch to Kendrick, an out. So that keeps the pitch count down, especially early in the ball game for Liriano, where he might get into the seventh or eighth inning. Here is Albert Pujols. Pujols off to a slow start. He has faced Liriano only three times. He walked once and 0 for 2 overall. Twins have done a nice job with Pujols keeping him in the infield. He looped a base hit for an RBI in the ball game yesterday. Drove in the first run of the game. But other than that, he has not gotten a ball out of the infield. I see a lot of times Pujols, you know, signing that big contract, and he says the pressure's not on him, but I'm sure he's feeling it a little bit, and it'll take a while for him to relax. And uh, be the typical Elber Pujols that he is, a career 328 hitter coming into this season with 445 Major League home runs, and this just his 12th Major League season. One and one from Liriano. There has to be a transition. We talked about it the other night. You got some interleague play, so he's familiar with the ballparks, but to have linked himself emotionally to the market he was playing in for as long as he did it has to you know tug on your heartstrings and and, and make you think about uh, the change that you've uh, undergone he was grounded in in St. Louis he lived in the area he grew up in Missouri so he kind of knows that area and all of a sudden now he's out in fast paced Southern California it's going to take him a while to adjust to a lot of different things the pressures of who he is and the monies that the Angels paid to get him into an Angel uniform. He wasn't traded. He chose to go to Southern California through free agency. Two and one. And another breaking pitch. And we saw Glenn Perkins uh, retire Pujols on a good slider down and in. And. Liriano went back in there for strike two. Yeah, you know, you know, Liriano, his strikeout pitches that hard slider down and in, almost what Perkins was able to strike out, or he did able to strike out Pujols in last night's ball game on that good slider down and in. See if they go ahead and try that. Pujols right on top of the plate, as you can see, his hands are almost on the inner half of that plate. Foul back, still two and two. He tried to sneak the fastball away, and Pujols fouls it off. For Liriano, this is his fourth career start against the Angels. He's one and two with a high 7.27 ERA. His previous three starts in Anaheim. This is his first start here at Target Field against the Angels. Two and two.
Mariano I would imagine as a base runner pretty hard to run against only because he is pretty quick home Mauer behind the plate outstanding arm. Another throw over. Mauer behind the plate. Looking into the Twins dugout see whether they want another throw over. Just the whole pace of this, so I, you know, we're always uh, complimenting pitchers who keep a rhythm going. But yet, in Liriano's case, they want him to, at times, be more deliberate, think about what he's doing, throw over to first, rather than get amped up for a big at bat like this. High and tight, three and two. They went to the fastball, up and in. Tried to hurry his delivery right there, and that created that high fastball. Now you probably see a Sturrus take off right here on a 3 2 pitch with one out. It'll strike him out, throw him out right here. 3 2 to Pujols. Runner goes. Pitch bounced foul again. Good steal percentage for Isturis, who started the game with a single to center on the second pitch delivered by Lariano. Runner goes, and the pitch hit to center. Span over a few steps, and Pujols gets it to the outfield. Carries the bat with him to yep. first base, two down. Pretty good change up right there. Pujols a little out front, create that fly ball out. Last night, Torrey Hunter trying to pinch Parmalee's uh, ball against the wall. The ball took a funny hop, and then Torrey dangerously crashed into the sidewall down there. He said he felt like he got punched by Mike Tyson. And before the game, Chris Parmalee uh, going out to check with Hunter, making sure everything's all right. Yeah, saying a whole right side hurts. And he did a face plant into the padding. Before and after that play, two impressive doubles for Torrey Hunter. Both of them hustle doubles. Hit a little looper in the center field. Span tried to catch it, blocked it, it rolled free. And Hunter, charging out of the box, hustled into a double. And then against Matt Caps, he hit a slow roller up the middle. It died in short center field. This one bounced to short. Carroll has an easy play well, to that's see like it. That's why Torrey Hunter is so respected because of his hustle and his hard play. Liriano pitches around a leadoff single. Twins will try to score first for the first time this year with this Menards batting order. Denard Span, Jamie Carroll, Joe Maurer, Justin Morneau, Josh Willingham, Chris Parmalee. 
Danny Valencia, Ben Revere, and Alexi Casilla. And on the mound this afternoon for the Angels, it'll be right-handed starter Dan Heron making his second start. His first one, not as impressive that, uh, you know, he expects himself. They, they say he had a little bit of tired arm coming out of spring training, and I think the numbers show it right there. One walk, five strikeouts. He allowed two home runs to the Kansas City Royals. Royals beat him in that ballgame 6-3. Span Carroll and Maurer to get things started. And a strike on the outside corner. We saw CJ Wilson. We saw Jarrett Weaver. Now we see number three of four very good starters for the Angels. Dan Heron, this guy is about consistency and staying healthy. Over the last seven seasons, he has pitched 16, 216 innings or more per season. Making his 257th major league start here this afternoon. Guy that has nasty stuff. He has an outstanding splitter, a fastball in the low 90s, a curveball changeup. In his third season with the Angels, 10th overall at the major league level. One and two to span. And takes up high two and two. Aaron working way over on the first base side of the pitching rubber. Almost on the edge of the pitching rubber. And Span squirts it foul into the Angel dugout. You know, we talked uh, on opening day and then again last night about the Angel bullpen really being the team's Achilles heel last year and again last night. You can't blame the starting pitchers. Last year they had three starting pitchers. With 228 innings or more, including Heron, who pitched 238 and a third. Here's a drive into the right field corner, and Span should start the game with an extra base hit. A leadoff double for Denard Span. Well, Denard with his first extra base hit of the year. Heron looked like he tried to come in again. And take a look at the pitcher ball. Came over the plate. Span, good solid swing. Down that right field line. Now we're going to see Jamie Carroll, I believe, at his finest. Just going to say, I'll bet you a buck the ball's hit to the right side of the field here, base hit or not. Carroll got a big base hit to right field that gave the Twins a big two out hit, drove in the eventual game winning run last night. And a foul over the Twins dugout. And you even right saw side. with that swing right there. All he's trying to do is inside out to ball. If I make an out, I'm going to make it over toward Pujols or to Kendrick over to the right side of the field. Carroll five for 15 lifetime against Dan Heron. But he knows what his job is right here. There it is. There's his job. Base hit would have been nice, but he advanced Span to third with one away. You know what? In the box score, if he doesn't play anymore, it's 0 for 1. But I'll tell you what, that, that's kind of like 1 for 1 right there. Doing his job, getting Span over, so hopefully Joe Maurer can drive him in. Northland Ford defense. Wells, Gorgeous, and Hunter in the outfield. Kayasco, his third straight game at third base. Asturis and Kendrick up the middle, of course. Who holds it first? And Bobby Wilson does the catch it. Those are the little things you have to do in a long season to win the close ball games. And the Angels, of course, playing the infield back. So Maurer, a very good hitter, but it really wouldn't take much at all here to get the Twins their first run of the ball game. Their strike one. Maurer, very good numbers against Dan Heron over their meetings. Eight hits and 21 at bats, a 3.81 batting average. Drifts outside one and one. From our three hits, all singles in 18 at bats. Pulled foul off the screen in front of the Twins dugout. Heron with that cutter or slider that came inside. On the bat handle of Joe Mauer. They have so many different assortment of pitches. Fastball, he'll throw the two seamer and the four seamer. Two seamer will sink, four seamer, more of a straight fastball. Hard slider, curveball, then the split finger. A 
And Maurer strikes out. And there's that split finger right there. Aaron, one of those pitchers able to pick up a strikeout when he needs it. And he needed it right there early in the ballgame. Fourth time this year that Maurer's gone down on strikes. And the Twins have got a big two out hit from Carroll to win the ball game last night. We'll hope to get one here early in the ball game from Morno. So outside, ball one. Close pitch. Morno looking for his first run batted in of the year. Five singles and a couple of doubles. Outside again. Heron on both those pitches his shoulders slumped he thought he'd clip the outside corner. Well, you have to keep hitting your spot Aaron the guy that again you know he's got good great stuff but you can't throw down the middle so he's going to try to make that ex that plate expand a little bit. He's not going to give away from trying to hit the corner like that. <laughs> he went right back to the same spot and got the call two and one. Saw the first two. And you keep hitting your spot, and hopefully that umpire behind the plate tonight. Today it's D.J. Raver. A fly to left center field, retreating as Wells, and the Twins waste a leadoff double, leaving Span at third base. No score after one. on the Twins first homestand of the season which means we need to be showing you some of the new food you can be enjoying at Target Field this year. So I have in my hand the buffalo chicken mac and cheese which is classic macaroni and cheese but with buffalo chicken mixed in here and then blue cheese breadcrumbs on top. So it's all toasty and it's got a little bit of a kick to it. So if you like food with some zing but not overly spicy it's a good menu option. It's right next to Herbex at a concession stand near section 114. Dick and Birthday told me this has been by far their best seller. So I'll bring it up wow. and give you guys a sample. That sounds good. Well, I like mac and cheese. I like uh, you know, buffalo chicken. Buffalo chicken. I like blue cheese. Good combo. No, I'm not a blue cheese guy. There's a strike on the outside corner, two and one to Mark you like, Trump. You like blue cheese? Yeah, I want a, want a wedge salad. Yeah, no. yeah. You no? Know? Okay. More of a ranch guy. Yeah. Missing inside three and one to the designated hitter for the Angels. Mark Trumbo had a great rookie season last year, led the team in home runs and runs batted in. At 29 home runs last year, drove in 87 runs, second in the American League in the rookie of the year voting. And he can do that. Yep. And he's just given the Angels a one nothing lead. Deep into wow. the upper deck. Wow. Trumbo on a 3 1 count, pounds one. 
for his first home run of the year. Yeah, came into that at bat three for seven, hitting 429 without a home run or an extra base hit. And boy, he hit that ball a long way. So for the sixth game out of six, the other guy scored first. Twins had a great chance in the bottom of the first, didn't get it done. And now the Angels lead one nothing. Look at the extension right there and the power. Reminds me a lot of Tim Salmon when Tim Salmon played for the Angels, came up and was rookie of the year for the Angels. Here's Vernon Wells, there's strike one. You'd have to call this a short, yeah. compact swing, wouldn't you? Yeah, they measure that at 416 feet. Bouncer up the middle, backhanded by Casilla, throwing on the run, and a nice scoop by Parmalee. A low throw by Casilla, who ended up where a shortstop would normally play, and Parmalee dug out the low throw on this backhand side. Uh, about all you could do as an infielder, what Casilla did. I mean, he's got to go to his right and on the run. He knows he's got to get something on that ball. And Parmley, a nice little pickup at first base. So a nice all around defensive play by Casilla and Parmley for the first out. Strike one to Alberto Cayaspo. Nice scoop right there. Keep that glove open. And good call by Brian Onora. One and one. The home run by Trumbo just. The second Angel home run hit over the fence. Peter Borges is inside the Parker. Hit halfway up the fence last night. Two and one. Vernon Wells has the other home run hit over the fence. Remember in Baltimore, Liriano sailed through the first inning. And then Adam Jones hit the home run in the second, and it really seemed to have an impact on Liriano. So the challenge here uh, for the balance of this game is shrug off the Trumbo home run. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just a solo home run. It's okay, it's one nothing, big deal, but you got to get back to pitching. And that ball left out over the plate, and Kiaspo ends up getting the second hit, or excuse me, the third hit for the Angels off of Liriano. You know, he got out of the second inning. Jones hit the home run, then he walked Weeders, and then he got out of the inning. But it was a third and fourth inning where he used, you know, over 40 pitches in those two innings. And that's where the, uh, the Orioles just kind of took advantage of Liriano's wildness with the fastball and his inconsistency. Third Angel hit. Here's their catcher today. Bobby Wilson has just one at bat on the year. Well, Wilson, the backup catcher in his fifth season with the Angels. Side ball one. Known more as a defensive catcher than an offensive catcher. A career 206 coming into this year. Last year for the Angels hit only 189 in 57 games. Down low. And this is a guy where you look as you're a starting pitcher you look at the lineup you say this is a guy I have to get out. He's not a he's not a okay a major league hitter. It's kind of like if, if the opposing team was looking at Drew Butera in the lineup you know the guys are more of a defensive catcher. These are the guys you have to get ahead in the count because now he becomes a better hitter because Lariano's got to throw him a fastball right here. Yeah, and he misses. Three and oh. You see Liriano, he just flies open that arm. That's why he's been so inconsistent. He cannot find that release point on a consistent basis because he has a tendency to open up and your arm is either dragging or it's just out of whack. 3 and 0 to Wilson. There's a fastball. You have to almost have to do it again. Pump it in there and hopefully Wilson now watch his arm right here. Watch the shoulder right there stayed in. And a better follow through, but again, somebody that lands on his heels and almost recoils back towards shortstop. Bouncer, a foul ball. Nice spear by Valencia behind the bag. Three and two. And 
if you're a pitcher right here again Wilson up. Don't try to throw at the slider or a change up. Just go ahead and challenge him right here. Make him swing the bat. No free passes. See if the Angels move Kiaspo here. He stays put and the pitch hit foul into the seats. You know, last night Kevin Millwood pitched for the Mariners and pitched well. And after the game, Eric Wedge, his manager, said, you know, Millwood is the best he's ever seen at damage control. So I read that and I thought, that's what the Twins want to see from Francisco Liriano. A better job of damage control, pitching out of situations. And that's another one grounded foul. We saw his dominance in the first inning in Baltimore. But then the Orioles got some guys on base, and before he knew it, he was out of the game because he couldn't limit the damage. Well, you know, a lot of people feel Liriano's still a project that he's going to get better, but this is his seventh season at the major league level. He's gone through the Tommy John surgery, he's made the All Star team, but he just has not put it together yet consistently, like he did in his first year at the major league level back in 2006. Another 3 2 pitch, and it's laced up the middle. It's the fourth angel hit. Kayaspo will hold up at second base. So Wilson, with a hitter's count throughout his at bat, ends up with a base hit. Saturday, NASCAR on Fox heads to Texas and goes under the lights in prime time as defending champion Matt Kenseth will lead the world's best drivers to the Great American Speedway to chase the checkered flag. Fox Sports is proud to bring you exclusive coverage of Sprint Cup Series racing. Presented by Farmer live from the Texas Motor Speedway Saturday at 6 p.m. Central. First and second. This is one of those situations we were talking about, particularly with the bottom of the order hitting. Liriano needs to find a way to calm down and get the twins off the field with a one-nothing score. Gorgeous, the guy who hit the three run inside the park home run. That quickly covered up a two run twins lead at the time. There's a bouncer foul. You, know, you talked about Liriano's rookie season, but as we remember, he wasn't in many situations like this because he had dominant stuff. He he dominated hitters, and there were very few times that opponents were able to mount any kind of an inning against him. I remember back then they were saying you know he's the uh, reincarnation of uh, Johan Santana. It was well, what a combo Liriano and Santana in the same rotation. One and one to Borges. Tough guy to double up because of his speed. Here's a drive to left center field. It one hops the wall. It's two nothing Angels. Wilson will be held at third and Borges drives one. To the gap in left center, and it's the fourth angel hit here in the second inning. Falling behind an account, coming in with the fastball and the location of the fastball. Pretty much right there, you can see heart of the plate. And Borges, good fastball hitter, one hops the fence. And really, the lack of the speed of Bobby Wilson is a one run double rather than a two run double. First time through the order, Ron Coomer. Liriano's given up five hits. Yeah, he's you know made made some good pitches, and he's like Bert was saying, and you guys were talking about, has been flying open some. It's kind of interesting when same thing as a hitter. If if for the starting pitcher he's throwing the ball and it looks like he's trying to overthrow Bert, his fastball's been 87, 88, 89. When he stayed nice and close and threw which looked a lot easier, 92, 93. So. Putting more effort into something doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get results on the radar gun or obviously results at home plate. I just I look at him and he is definitely a little different pitch to pitch. To me, the other thing you guys were talking about in his rookie year, he got a lot of outs on pitches out of the zone. And as teams started watching him throw, they realized they were swinging in a lot of pitches that weren't strikes early in Frankie's career, and they're taking a lot more pitches on him now. Here's Asturias, the infield halfway brought in with Wilson not uh, good leg speed at all uh, at third base. They don't have to bring the infield completely in. And well, you saw you saw pitching coach Rick Anderson go out there, and he has basically over the last three or four years kind of babysat Liriano to get that 
power of positive thinking into Liriano's mind that hey young man you have great stuff you have to find a way to get ahead in the count and then trust your stuff down in the strike zone. And two quick fouls now and Liriano who when he's good when he's on is able to get a strikeout and he needs to get one here. Yeah, high pitch count, and that's been a problem for Liriano. 25 pitches so far this inning, 14 in the first. Now let's see, let's see if he can get that slider maybe down and in right here. Get a strikeout. Ooh, that was a pretty athletic catch yeah. by Maurer. Well, wow. you imagine you're looking maybe down, and all of a sudden the ball is, I mean, up and away. Watch Joe right here. He wants that ball down, and the ball has to. Joe has to leap to catch it. And he's 6'5. Mm -hmm. And a base hit to center. It'll score one. Or just being waved around third. It'll score two. And it's four to nothing with the sixth hit in the first 10 at bats against Liriano. Well, if that's a slider, it was something about 83 miles an hour. It was not a very good slider. Whatever that pitch was, Bert, it, it stayed on the same plane. Yeah, let's take no, a look right. Yeah, no that's a slider right the there. It stayed right there. You've got to try to drop that ball. When Liriano gets a strikeout, it starts knee high and then down. The ball left up. Asturias fights it off for a two-run single, and the Angels have a four-nothing lead. Bert, and a question: if, you, if your front side is flying open. You're, it's very tough to stay on top of the baseball right. as you talk about with your slider or fastball and you kind of get on the side of the ball and the ball comes out and it goes sideways with the spin and you don't get that depth going down with your breaking pitch is that correct. Yeah I mean you know Liriano you talk to Rick Anderson when he has a side piece my goodness he's got great stuff but when he gets out to the ball game they're trying to relax him a little bit take take a deep breath but it just has not worked for Liriano. There's a strike on the outside corner. The only out of the inning required a remarkable scoop at first by Chris Parmalee. And a great play, uh, play up the middle by Casillo. Yeah. That was this inning. <laughs> it seems like it should have been last inning. Four nothing Angels. Kendrick with a fly ball to center his first time up. See right there. I mean that's a great example right there of opening up and. You're, you you lead with the palm of your hand rather than get on top of that baseball. One and one. Asturias goes. Mowers throw. Not in time. And it's a stolen base. For my series, Sturis. We talk about Joe's arm, outstanding arm, but this was stolen off of Liriano. Look at that. By the time Joe catches the ball, Sturis is two thirds of the way to second base. So Sturis steals his first base of the year. Angels their second on the season. Four of the last five fastballs have been nowhere near the strike zone. This is a concentration. These are the adjustments you have to make in a ball game. And Liriano now he's not trying to pitch. All he's doing right now he's throwing. Nowhere near the strike zone, and now first base is filled with his first walk. His start against the Orioles was so disappointing because the Twins lost the opener. With Carl Pavano on the mound, and the Twins were looking to get to 500 with Liriano on. You know, them. let's take a look right here. What I'm talking about is Liriano. Now he'll throw the four seam and the two seam fastball, but he's leading right now with his palm going this way, rather than when I say get on top of the ball to throw a good slider or change up or anything. You have to do this, work at the end, and Liriano right now is doing that to where he's pushing the ball out and the ball's all over the place. No consistency at all. Still only one out. And pools at the plate. Popped up and Parmalee retreats. Infield fly rule is called. 
And that's a big second out. Two down. Runners remain at first and second. Now Pujols missed his pitch right there. Lariano basically said here. Hopefully he'll pop it up and it's exactly what he got. He got the second out on a on a pitch right there. Pujols looking fastball I'm sure you can see right down the middle and it just got underneath it to create that pop up. And now Hunter ninth man to bat. Runners go. Mauer's throw to second base is skipping into center field. It'll be an error charge to Mauer. And his Duras will score. Well, that's a play right there that that's put on. If the guy at second takes off, you throw to second base to try to get the trail runner because he doesn't know if he's going to be able to get a good jump. You see Kendrick looking. He takes off. You have to throw the ball all the way in the air. And the ball short hops. Casilla gets by him. And Astura scores the fifth run of the inning. Five nothing Angels. Both Asturias and Kendrick will get a stolen base, and then the error by Maurer allowing Asturias to come home and Kendrick to move over to third. Two and zero out of Hunter. And there's a strike. Field retreating as Revere under the overhang makes the catch that couldn't have missed the limestone facing by much an awful inning for Liriano and the Twins. Lead. Oh, Heron, you know, a veteran that uh, knows what he needs to do with this 5 nothing lead, and that's continue to throw strikes. Josh Wellingham leading off the second for the Twins. And a belt high strike over the inside corner. Willingham, Parmalee, and Valencia facing Heron. And there's a strike on the outside corner. You don't see many pitchers, do you? Way over on the, on the edge of the pitching rubber like that? Well, you know what? Baker was over there for a, a time. Blackburn was over there, and they moved him over a little bit, and you can see just the toe. Well, Santana did that on the third base yeah, side. Yeah. As a left handed pitcher. And Tommy John pitched three, four inches in front of the pitching uh, rubber sometimes, right? They give it to you. <laughs> Nolan, Nolan was known to do that. Is that right? 
not breaking the rules right. if you don't get caught. No, right? you, you have to make contact with the pitching rubber, and you can see he's actually not. <laughs> <laughs> he gets Willingham out on strikes. And Aaron picks up his second strikeout. Well, there you go. You are here by Circle and Twin Fans. Uh, go to FoxSportNorth.com and click on the Circle Me Purchase. Submit an email on why your sign should be circled on an upcoming home game and have a chance to visit us up here in the booth. We'll reveal two of the sections the morning before each game. We have some guests coming up here today. One will be listed on FoxSportNorth.com and the other on KFANKFAN.com. Chris Parmalee, the hitter. Count is 2 and 0 was 0 and 2 when he got his big game tying triple last night. Popped up right side. And Kendrick with the catch, two down. Let's go to Ron Kilmer. Ron, I think you were going to talk about Danny Valencia who's coming up the bat right here. Yeah, Danny, Danny, you know, last night finally got, you know, got staying through the middle of the field and and hit a line drive. He's had some issues coming off the ball. You see right there that approach of definitely letting the ball get deep, guys, and shooting it back to the middle of the field. When you when you look at what he's done, you know the GMC keys to the game for Danny today: use the middle of the field and make sure that your front side stays in, and trying to drive that ball back at the pitcher, or even you know keeping right center field as the spot that you're looking to hit the ball to. He we know he can pull the ball, but you have to let that ball get to you to drive it the other way. And right now, so far this early part of the season, he's been a little out of whack, out in front of a lot of balls, hooking a lot of ground balls. Yeah, I, Ron, I, I mean, Ron, I was going to ask you that hitters sometimes get pull happy, right? They do sometimes, and Danny's had some success, you know, hitting some home runs and pulling the ball at times. You know, but, you know, with pitches like that, your timing gets a little out of whack, and you start lunging forward. Well, Six in a row set down by Harris. And that's what you do with a 5 nothing lead. You get your offense going again. Space and the player's name to short code 234 234. Let's have a hole to try to crawl out of. Mark Trumbo started the digging with a home run to left center field. Liriano fell behind him and paid the price, and now he delivers ball one with a fastball that. Well, you know, you have all inning to sit and think about getting back in the strike zone. The first pitch Liriano throws is up out over the plate. I mean, missing by two feet. Fouled away one and one. It's really hard for Liriano to stay on top of that ball when again he opens up so quickly and that arm and that, that elbow's almost dragging a little bit. 
stay over the pitching rubber a little bit longer and then get, get that ball down. Sharp grounder foul. Even that slider right there a little flat because he's still not on top of that baseball. That is the work part of pitching. That always to me it was and working out front. Watch this breaking ball right there just stayed right there just spun. When Liriano has that good curveball or breaking ball slider it goes down and in. Some bite to it right, right? tilt I think yeah. is another term that's used. One and two. Now another slider get it down and in. I fly down the left field line. Willingham chases that Dan is out of everyone's reach with Carroll in the vicinity as well. Bird, I'm watching a dick from the side here and it really looks like Frankie Frankie's doing from the side an okay job of getting to a balance point but then once he starts going forward guys he he's really out there and his arm is still way back by the time his body weight and everything it really seems forward before his arm is able to catch up to getting on top as you're saying with that fastball it just he really looks like he's, he's really out in front of his arm. There's a better there pitch go. right there down and in. You know sometimes you're out there and your arm you just it's hard to catch up sometimes you're just a little bit on a lazy side. But right here he does a better job of. You see the recoil I still don't like that but the ball in a better location down in the strike zone. So his first strikeout comes to his 14th batter. Now he delivers ball one to Vernon Wells. Wells hit a bouncer up the middle. Casilla went to his right, made a nice pickup and throw. Parmalee made a better backhanded pickup of the one hopper for the first out of the inning. Remember, you know, Jared Weaver last night, we were talking about how he throws across his body, but he's still able to get that arm out front to use it as a whip. And he can, you know, Weaver pitched outstanding last night. There's Jared Weaver. Got a no decision in the twin six to five win. But you know, Liriano, same thing. You gotta hurry that get arm quicker arm speed to get that arm out front. Because he is a violent type of pitcher. He has a violent delivery that you have to allow that arm to catch up and then whip through as you're releasing that ball toward home plate. One and two to Wells. Well, mechanics aside for the moment, you're you're dealing with a pitcher who today at least has no command of his fastball and no break on his slider. So you 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 make the adjustment. You go to what's working, and right there, you you need to throw more off-speed pitches. You need to go to the slider. And first, you need to get ahead of the count, and then you work in your pitches that aren't working and. Guess what? Maybe in inning two, those pitchers are going to be working again. That's what I was going to ask you. Just because you don't have it in the second inning doesn't mean you can't find it right. later on in the start. There's a drive to center. It'll carry out to Span and makes the catch out number two. You can ask a question online at carsoup.com forward slash baseball. Luis Rosario from West St. Paul wondering whether a pitcher has a clear advantage in a cold weather game. Well, you know, pitchers are allowed to blow on their hands on, on cold days. Hitters don't like hitting in cold on cold weather. Today is beautiful. I, I don't think anybody has the advantage or disadvantage in today's ball game. But I know at the old Met, you know, when it was really cold or snowing, <laughs> sometimes, uh, yeah, I think the pitcher has the advantage if you can get a good grip on that baseball because your hands are frozen. One strike. That's always thought. That's where pine tar came in. <laughs> And Parmalee with a nice catch on the warning trip. A one, two, three, third. The Twins need to start pecking it away at an Angel five run lead.
Fox Sports North is brought to you by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. By CenturyLink. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. An interesting series of conversations during the break. Mike Sosha now being uh, taken back to the dugout. Ron Gardenhire talked to the home plate umpire D.J. Rayburn, who then went to the crew chief Tom right. Hallian, who then went to the mound. Well, I remember we showed you last inning about Dan Heron working off that first base side of the pitching rubber, and actually we showed you that you know there is no contact. See him slide, and then you have to have contact with that pitching rubber, and. Uh, if he if he has contact it was just maybe a quarter of an inch so I watch Dan here in a little bit now he'll use maybe two or three inches of that pitching rubber rather than maybe not at all. Here's Ben Revere taking a strike and that, that's all you have to do right there is just touch the rubber and Revere starts the third inning with a sharp single to center. So the twins didn't do anything with a leadoff double in the first we'll see what they can do with Revere's leadoff single. Casilla coming to the plate. I just left the fastball up right there, and Ben Revere took advantage of it right up the middle. The Twins get their second hit. Casilla, just one hit on the season. Now you can see where he puts plants that right foot now, about two or three inches. Capper foul. Casilla did that in Baltimore. Remember that uh, kind of just oh, a, a tapper in front. Rolled about nine inches in front of the plate. Twins uh, like to think they got Jamie Carroll going. Now they need to get Casilla going. Casilla one hit and 11 at bat so far. Just off that outside corner, one on one. Revere goes and the pitch pulled foul. Good jump by Revere. Yeah, one thing Ben Revere can do, he can steal some bases. 34 stolen bases last year in 43 attempts. Got a very good jump right there. Even though now you're down five to nothing, you have to get back into the game one run at a time. And ben trying to get in the scoring position. And a base hit to right. So the third inning starts with the eight and nine batters delivering singles. And remember that five run second for the Angels. It was the bottom third that did most of the damage. Tickets to see the Cubs, Phillies, and Brewers are going to be hard to come by this summer. But one way of getting your ticket without any problem is joining the Twins season ticket family. 20 game and 40 game packages are still available, and packages begin at just $220. 833-TWINS or TwinsBaseball.com. Uh, if you'd like to get more information about the benefits of being a twin season ticket holder. Yeah, Mike Butcher the pitching coach out to talk to him and you wonder that little conversation with the umpires if uh, you know it, it uh, got uh, Dan Heron underneath his, his skin a little bit but he left a couple pitches up and both uh, Revere and Casilla took advantage of. It. Here's Span cracked a double into the right field corner in his first at bat. Down and away ball one. A strike on the outside corner. Well, the Twins hope that whatever the situation is here, whether Heron's a little flustered by the discussion that took place or whatever, that they can break through and, and get some. Uh, Run production out of this threat. Nice blocked by Wilson. It's two and one. This is going back a long ways. I remember as a kid listening to a Twins broadcast. Jim Cott was pitching. Bertie Tebbets, the Cleveland Indian manager, came out in the middle of an inning and made Jim Cott change his undershirt. 
because the sleeves were a little ragged. And uh, the Indians turned it around on Cott after he came back to the mound. And Jim forever would uh, kid Bertie Tebbets Tubb about that later and still talks about it now about how within the inning that really rattled Cott, who was a veteran at the time. Here's a pop up to short left. And Wells comes in. One down. Boy, you have at bats, you have good at bats, you have bad at bats, and that was a bad at bat for Span right there. He really didn't advance the runners, had nothing out of at bat except the first out for the Angels. Well, here's Jamie Carroll, hit a bouncer to second, which was exactly uh, what he wanted to do, absent a base hit. Advanced Span from second to third. Twins didn't score. Maurer struck out, or no flight out, and the Twins left. Span at third base. And some speed on the bases, too, that the Twins would like to utilize here. Revere and Casilla. One strike to Carroll. Check this swing one and one. Check swing, I think. They'll appeal and he went one and two. Carroll tried to hold up. But the bat head went through the hitting zone. Yeah, I mean, we're going to take a look right here. Yeah, the barrel went too far. Dan Heron does a good job of staying back and staying on top of that ball. Keeping the ball down in the strike zone. His split finger is his strikeout pitch. Pro second. When you look at Heron's numbers now, 39 pitches, 28 strikes, but the 11 balls have still been competitive pitches for the most part. Mm -hmm. Pitched with a purpose, and then you look at Lariano, and it's been just the opposite. One and two to Carroll. Foul away. Yeah, that looked like the split finger right there. Dan Heron, 31 years old. He's in his 10th major league season, three time All Star. Once with the Oakland A's, twice with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Came up with the Cardinals back in 2003. Just off the plate, and Wilson held it for a while. It's two and two. And Heron kind of shrugged her shoulders a little bit. Mike Socia asking where that pitch was. Straight over the top. He's outside. <laughs> to you it was. Two and two. And Carroll gets a piece. Well, one thing, Aaron, Aaron, too, outstanding control. Last year, he was the only pitcher in Major League Baseball to walk fewer batters than starts. He walked 33 batters in 34 starts. So, excellent control. Slow and getting up. Well, and that's how you pitch 238 in the third innings, too. You don't you throw strikes. Keep the ball around the plate. Another 2 2 to Carroll. And another one off the plate. Down five runs. You don't dare start the runners here, do you? Carroll, pretty good handler of a bat. You just don't want him to line the ball to somebody and take yourself out of the inning. Not with Mauer and Morneau on on deck and in the hole. Twins have about as much speed on the bases as they can possibly have. Heron spins. Nobody guarding second base. Now Kendrick coming in to talk to Heron. See, rather than a spin play, that would be more. It'd be more beneficial if he just raised that that left leg up and then 
say, spun over toward second base to see if, if Revere might be taken off. Full count to the twin shortstop. Runners go, and it's ball four. They're loaded up for Maurer. Well, a rare walk. We talked about the uh, not a lot of walks for Heron throughout his career. He's averaged less than two walks per nine innings. And he walks uh, Carroll right there, and a good at bat for, for Jamie Carroll to load the bases. Fourth walk for Carroll, the team leader. Nobody else has more than two. And here's Maurer has a chance to atone for that. First inning at bat, the Angels were pretty much giving the Twins the first run. They were playing the infield back, and Heron struck out Maurer and then got Morno on a fly ball. Yeah, this is where Twins need an extra base hit right here, a gap or somewhere in the outfield. Strike one. Mowers talked about the lack of power here at Target Field, but he said, you know, I have to hit to the ballpark. Well, the ballpark is. Open as far as the gaps, a lot of room out there. Mauer, a line drive hitter, can hopefully hit one in the gap right here. And Heron paints the corner again, 0 2. Fastball, flipping the corner. Mauer struck out on, you called the splitter, like splitter, right? Yeah. Okay. Cracked down the line, but twisting foul. Lauer three hits, all singles. A couple of runs batted in, including one last night. Popped up and field fly rule will be called. And Mowers retired. That'll leave the inning up to Morno. By a first three pitches outer half of the plate, and then he came in almost like a little cutter, and Joe ended up jamming himself and popping it straight up. See every all three pitches away, and then the little cutter inside, and Joe got the barrel of the bat out and popped it up. Two singles to start the inning. Carroll. Does a nice job working out a walk, and now the cleanup hitter will try to do just that. Yeah, this game's about picking each other up and see if Justin right here can pick up Joe. Strike on the outside corner, and again we talked to Heron's ability even in the first inning, pitching around a leadoff double, damage control. You got the three and four batters up, and his control, if anything, has been more refined in these at bats. Fly ball right field should end the inning. Kendrick out. Hunter in, and the Twins leave the bases full. It's still 5 0.
player to win the American League MVP in his first season after leaving the National League. Hmm. The first one that comes to mind is Frank Robinson. He was an MVP with the Reds and then in 66 won the Triple Crown and obviously was the MVP. So I'll go with Frank Robinson. Here's Bobby Wilson up and away ball one and Liriano. Well you talked about early on Pavano last night strike one on the first pitch and, and Liriano seems to really be struggling with that here today. Yeah 17 batters been able to get strike one on nine of the 17. And now it's two and oh and that's part of the problem too after the first pitch if it's one and oh then you really have to come back. Well, he fell strike. behind on Wilson in that five run second inning if you fell behind three and oh had to come in with the fastballs and Wilson finally got a fastball in his seventh at pitch seventh pitch in that at bat and hit a base hit up the middle. Wilson. Well this is a guy you want to attack early make him get himself out early. Wilson might have done him a favor there. It looked like a pitch outside, and he tapped it foul two and one. Hey, when you don't get a lot of at bats, you're up there swinging anyway. <laughs> yeah, swing. I think he went two strikes, two and two. You know, even though Liriano had a bad second inning, he had a one, two, three, third, and now you build on that. That's all you can do. You can't bring anything back. You can only go forward in the game of baseball. But you learn from your mistakes and hopefully you get better. And whatever he's hopefully will finish here will carry him into next start if he's able to put some zeros on the board. And the Twins don't have an off day till two weeks from today. So they need their starting pitchers to pitch as many innings as possible. Dribbled foul. But it's always the pitch count that hurts Liriano where he can only go maybe five or six innings. Right now at 69 pitches here with nobody out in the fourth inning. 14 in the first, 37 in the second, 12 in the third. Up high, three and two. And you tell yourself if you're Liriano, if you miss, you miss down in the strike zone. Too many pitches have been letter high and up in the strike zone. Breaking ball missed, and Wilson draws a leadoff walk. First walk for Liriano. That might very well restart the Twins bullpen. Excuse me, second one. Borges will hit. Borges cracked a double to the gap in left center his first time up. They are in fact scurrying down on the twins bullpen. He's going to get loose down there. Thank you. Sorry. Here's Borges. They'll get one. Safe at first. Borges. They said in his inside the park home run last night. He circled the bases in 14 seconds flat, which is phenomenally fast. And he beat the relay there. Twins get just the one. And he really didn't start running until between first and second when he saw, you know, Willingham, you know, fall against the wall. I mean, Taylor made double play, but Borges just beats it out with his speed to stay out of the double play. Ron Gardenhire asked about his defense this morning, said, and you can see Borges' foot on the bag and the ball still a couple of feet from Parmalee's glove. Borges takes off. Mowers throw, not in time. But Ron Gardenhire said the biggest defensive shortcoming the Twins have had in the first handful of games, their inability to turn at double plays. I'm not sure it could have been turned any quicker than it was because of Borges' speed, but there have been a few double plays that have not been turned out there. Yeah, great jump by Borges right there. He steals his first base in two attempts on the year and the fourth stolen base for the Angels this afternoon. One strike. They steer us with a pair of singles. They've both gone up the middle. The second base hit. Maybe the biggest hit of the game, even bigger than Trumbo's solo home run. It drove into right. And then Asturias stole second and third and ended up scoring on Mauer's throwing air. Good fastball right there, middle in. The 
Asturis in his eighth season with the Angels. Good utility player for Mike Sosha. Half swing and a strike. He's gone. So Asturis strikes out. That was the strikeout Liriano was looking for back in the second inning. Yeah, second strikeout for Liriano. Good sequence of pitches here. That slider. There's a better location. That slider down. When that fast when that sliders down like that it looks like a fastball and then it just dips at the end. Almost the same slider that Perkins displayed last night in his relief outing. Missing inside to Kendrick. One and oh. Down the right field line and Revere drifts to the corner to end the inning. Lead off walk to Wilson does no damage, but it's still five nothing Angels. Sports North is brought to you by Burger King, the proud sponsor of opening week baseball. Time for the Sanford Health Injury Report. Good news for the Detroit Tigers. Victor Martinez was thought would need uh, two knee operations. He's had the first one, but now they say the second one, the more serious of the two, won't be needed. Yeah, so maybe, uh, you know, Martinez, uh, I mean, that Detroit lineup, pretty awesome anyway. If they get him back, say, after the All Star break or even. The last couple months would be a nice plus for the Tigers. Well, here's how it was explained to me. The Tigers went out and signed Prince Fielder in response to losing Martinez for the year. Now, if he comes back in August, by my way of thinking, they have to then release Prince Fielder. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, if, if that was the thinking if, since the Twins are in that division. Right. If that's the reason that they signed Fielder to begin with, and that's not the case, then there ought to be a law. They just have to simply release Prince Fielder and let him go on the open market. I don't think that'll happen. Two and two to Willingham. He'll be followed by Parmalee and Valencia. Now so far, Heron trying to stay away from Willingham. He doesn't want to like immediately leave a pitch middle in because Josh has shown that he can hit it over that left field fence. Wilson sitting away again. Full count. Now he struck out Willingham in his first at bat, first out of the second inning on a good slider down and away. That Willingham took. Foul back. Well, the Twins had a glorious chance in the third inning to jump back into the game. A bases clearing double by the three or four batters would have made it a 5 3 game. Now they've got to try to re congest the base paths here. Tab foul. You know, Dick, I always talk about a pitcher. We talked about Liriano with this quick delivery. He has a tendency to drag his arm. Well, what Heron does is once he starts his windup, he takes a little 
little sp little second to make sure that he gets over that pitching rubber. Watch his windup right here, and then he'll pause just for a second right there to allow that arm to catch up in a great slider again, great location. And Willingham goes down for the second time, and Herring picks up Heron picks up his fourth strikeout. A little hesitation right there allows that arm to catch up, and a nasty pitcher's pitch down and away. Here's Parmalee popped up to Kendrick his first time up. And we have some guests up in the booth, uh, Joe and Jolene Johnston from uh, Summit, South Dakota. So welcome up to the booth. They didn't bring their signs with. We left it down there. I would have loved to have signed it, but uh, maybe another time. Thank you. Welcome to the booth. And third base umpire Tom Hallian says Parmalee went. It's 0-2. Tip and Wilson hangs on. Parmalee is gone on strikes. So two down, and that'll bring up Valencia. Well, over his career, Heron has averaged just over seven strikeouts per nine innings, and he picks up his fifth strikeout here in the fourth. Saturday, the Twins host the American League champion Rangers at noon, and prior to the contest, the next statue outside of Target Field will be unveiled. The festivities honoring Kent Herbeck begin at 10:30, right outside of Gate 14. Valencia grounds a single to left. Tickets available for Saturday's game. You can check on the pricing for this weekend's game by logging on to twinsbaseball.com or call 833 Twins. It's a base hit, but again, it looked like Valencia reached across the plate to pull that ball through the hole rather than driving it to the opposite field. Yeah, the one thing Danny's been doing, he's been getting pitched away and a lot of breaking pitches, Dick. And you see this pitch right here is out and away. And he hooks it and he hits it to the hole. What he's going to have to start doing is like he did last night and shooting some balls to the middle or just getting his approach back towards the middle of the field, even to right center. And then all of a sudden he'll start staying on the ball a little better. And instead of hitting that ground ball, he'll be able to drive that ball to left center. One strike to Revere, line sharply to center. And now a little flare to center. And Borges comes over to make the catch, and the inning ends. On to the fifth inning with the Angels in front, 5 0. Don't you? Uh, no. Oh. Sorry. You're I don't have an iPod. You don't have one. You no, don't do you listen. have one? Yeah, you don't listen uh, to much music. I uh, guess. Country but. Western, yeah. But right. I do that on my iPad. Here's Albert Pujols leading off the fifth. Liriano out there hoping to keep the 
Score at 5 nothing. This one punched into right field. Revere racing to the line, puts it away. And again, the Twins done a nice job on pool holes in this series. They'll hope to uh, do the same in Anaheim in a few weeks and then uh, back here in about a month. Set your compass due north on Fox Sports North this week. Join Bill Shirk and Laura Shara on the ultimate fishing adventure way up north to the Northwest Territories. Watch Due North Outdoors tonight at 10, only on Fox Sports North. One gone quickly in the fifth, and now here's a fly ball to center. And Span should gather that one in. Two down. Go back to the trivia question. I, Frank Robinson was uh, uh, the first name that came to mind after the trade for uh, Milt Pappas, who was the MVP in the American League. And at one point or another, he must have crossed paths with Vladimir Guerrero. In fact, maybe managed him in Montreal. Yeah, may have. Together. Uh, and Guerrero uh, looking for work. It was a big acquisition by the Angels. Yeah, last year with the uh, Baltimore Orioles. 1 and 0 to Mark Trumbo. And now 2 and 0. Well, Liriano has settled down nicely since that five run second inning is not allowed a hit over the last two plus innings. It was Trumbo's home run that started the five run inning. A no doubter over the bullpen area in left center field. And I think that's what you were talking about Dick is you know for Liriano stay away from the multi run innings you talked about Kevin Millwood you know. What uh, what Eric Wedge said, he does such a great job of damage control. And there's a walk right there, not a bad pitch, but uh, down and away. And Liriano walks his third batter of the ball game. You may remember last year, Liriano got off to a poor start as well when he threw his no hitter against the White Sox. He checked into that game with an ERA of over nine. So what we've seen in Baltimore and here today is pretty much. What we saw last year early in the season. Well, he had such a good spring training. He gave a lot of credit because he worked, he threw a lot more during the winter than he did the previous winter. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm a, I feel I'm a pitcher that needs to uh, really, uh, you know, throw a lot. And right there, Trumbull got a great jump off of Liriano and the Angels running bases like mad. That's their fifth stolen base of the ball game. Not much uh, Joe Maurer could do, but Trumbull taking off. Well, Liriano just walked him and then looked like he forgot about him. We don't expect Trumbo to go, I don't suppose, but 1 and 0 to Wells. Tap foul. Angels are a running ball club. That, that's what they're built around a lot of speed. They'll go from first to third in a heartbeat. That's what Mike Sosha likes them to do, but. Five stolen bases here this afternoon. They came into the ball game with only one, and that was uh, Howie Kendrick last night. Swing and a miss on the slider, one and two. They have some power in the lineup. Wells is one of five players they have who have put together a 30 home run season. Albert Pujols, obviously, Torrey Hunter, Kendry Morales, and Bobby Abreu, and then you got Trumbo who hit 29. 29, left. yeah. Close as you can get. One and two to Wells. That California math is incredible. Especially when you can relate it to a California team. <laughs> the Yankees, by the way, Twins opponent next week, they've got seven guys in their everyday lineup that have put together 30 home run seasons. That's poked down the line and it's hooking. But staying fair, and Trumbull will score on the ground rule double. And yeah, that's where that stolen base comes into play right there because the ball jumps out of play. If he's still at first base, he doesn't steal second. He has to be held up at third. But with the stolen base, Wells gets an RBI double and drives in his third run of the year, and his first hit, and his first double of the year. Hooking that ball right down the left field line. Ball hitting the limestone and going into the crowd. Here's Alberto Cayaspo. Ball one. Luriano now with 89 pitches. 
Six runs, all of them earned. Well, I shouldn't yeah, say that. The one won't be unearned, right, yep. on the Maurer uh, throwing air. 2 0. Alex Burnett warming up in the Twins pen. To right center, span racing over to the gap to end the inning. Another run for the Angels of the two out walk and the stolen base in the RBI double. Lottery winner's circle with $100 worth of scratch off lottery tickets celebrating a 50th birthday today. Nancy and Jody are sisters. It's Nancy's birthday, though, from Wolverton, Minnesota. Argusville, North Dakota is also represented. Small town USA. How's 50 going other it's than the score on the on the scoreboard? How's 50? Well, it's great. This is an awesome day. Beautiful sunshine. Great to be here. So it's Nancy's 50th. She'll get a circle from Bert and Jody, the much younger sister, kind of arranged the trip here, Dick and Bert, but the ladies say they're having a great time. Well, Nancy, happy birthday to you, young lady, and 359 more days until my next birthday. Really? Yep. The countdown continues. Seems like it was just last week. <laughs> Nancy, happy birthday to you. Lexi Casilla leading things off to 1-1 one, one count. Casilla hooks it foul. Uh, Casilla got a pitch up. A slider looked like uh, from uh, Heron in the third inning and lined it into right field for a base hit. Twins left the bases loaded. Wolverton, Minnesota, inning. by the way, I know you're dying to know. Just straight south of Moorhead, a little bit south of Comstock. And Casilla's gone on strikes. And Heron picks up his sixth strikeout. Good fastball middle end. Casilla raised his hands, but DJ Raber. Right on top. Watch where the catcher or the umpire sets up. Wilson gives him a good target. And okay, boy, hit the glove. Excellent control. Here's Span, the only extra base hit for the Twins. It came leading off the ball game. And I don't know. Sometimes I, I do believe in Omen. Sometimes I don't. But maybe it was an Omen in this case. Twins had a chance to score first. Here's Span squirting one to left. His second hit of the game. Span doubled. Carroll advanced him to third. And then it's not been a good day for Joe Maurer or Justin Morneau at the plate. They couldn't uh, deliver the hit that could have scored the first run on the first. And then they both misfired in the third. Yeah, good at bat right there by Span. Heron left the ball over the plate. Something that Ron Coomer was talking about with Danny Valencia right there. Not trying to do too much. Just slapped it the other way for a second hit. Here's Carroll. A ground out. The one that advanced Span to third. And then a walk. Carroll shoots it foul. 
talked a little bit about this I think uh, on Monday on the opening telecast of this series. You know the Angels had a bullpen collapse last year 25 blown saves tied for the most in the major leagues. One strike to Carroll and another foul. They had the three starters Heron Weaver and Santana that nearly pitched 700 innings between the three of them. So it wasn't that the bullpen was overused because they had three of the more durable and inning eating uh, starters in, in the game. But yet then the, one of their big investments was another starting pitcher in C.J. Wilson rather than bolstering the bullpen. One and two. Well, they went out and got some veterans. We saw them pitch in last night's ball game, Latroy Hawkins and also Isernhausen. Isernhausen was a nice surprise in spring training. They didn't expect him, and I guess that kind of tells you what the Angels maybe need is a little more help in that bullpen when you 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 have two guys that are 39 years old make your bullpen. Yeah. One and two to Carroll. But the horses are the starters. Well, Pinero, one of the other starters for them, just signed a minor league deal yesterday, not with the Angels. And in the dirt, blocked by Wilson, and Span will advance. Yeah, good jump right there by Denard Span. We saw Joe Maurer do it here the other night. Ball in the dirt, he took off to second base. Good read off the uh, off the ball in the dirt for Denard Span. As he kind of takes a walking lead, see where that ball lands in front of home plate. Wilson utilizes his chest protector, but Span scoots over to second base. Wild pitch will be charged to Heron. First half of this game has been pretty ugly for the Twins, but you know we're at halftime right now. Twins have five innings worth of at bats to get back into this game. Right. Which is why Mike Sosu stole Trumbo on the top of this inning. One looped over the head of pools, a base hit. Span had to hold up. He'll only gain third base. So Carroll punches a single, and Maurer and Morno come up with a chance to drive in some runs. Uh, Torrey Hunter playing very shallow in right field because they know they've been burned so many times when Carroll played in that Dodgers series. And that's the type of hitter he is. He'll inside out that ball and hit it softly the other way. Exactly what he does right there. Right off the end of the bat, Pujols goes back. But it's out of his reach, and there's Torrey right on top of that baseball. Span had to hold up, like you said, Dick, to make sure that that ball hit the grass. Ron Coomer, Joe Maurer, Justin Morneau had a chance in the first again in the third inning, and now another chance for them to produce in the fifth. Well, they do, and that's what you're hoping for when things don't work out early as you get that chance. As you were talking about, Dick, I think the approach for both of these guys is to try to shoot the ball the other way. Heron has just painted it outside corner. And then he's gotten Joe out with a fastball in on the second at bat, a little cutter that he popped up. But to me, Heron has been living on the outside part of the plate or off the plate. And if you're going to do any damage with runners in scoring position, you've got to be prepared to hit the ball the other way. Well, now they're going inside with a to right field, and Maurer clicks his first home run of the year. That's what you want to see right there. His second home run here at Target Field. And it comes in a good spot with two men aboard. Right, Heron tried to go that slider, his previous at bat, three fastballs away, and then the cutter inside. And this time, Joe opened up his previous home run to left field. This is the first one Joe Maurer pulled into the seats in right field. Twins cut the score in half on a three run home run by Joe Maurer. And now Morno. A fly to left, a fly to right. Pulled foul into the Twins dugout. And the young lady got the home run ball, 361 feet away from home plate. Tapper right side. Easy play for Kendrick, two down. 
And that'll bring up Willingham. That's what you want to see more from Joe Maurer right there. Boy, did he turn on that ball and drop the barrel of the bat and hit that ball sharply. Well, the very pitch, not necessarily in the same spot, but the very pitch that got in on his trademark in his earlier at bat, he was able to be a little bit quicker on and uh, hook it out of here. There's Willingham. Two strikeouts so far for the Twins left fielder. Dick, the other thing too is when you're behind in the count, like he was the at bat before that, you know, you're looking to make sure you cover the pitch away. That pitch right there, he wasn't behind in the count. So Heron doesn't get the ball in off the plate on him, which is what he was trying to do. Joe put a perfect swing on. Him. Well, I remember previous at bat, he got Joe to jam himself for that little mm -hmm. pop up with bases loaded. So maybe Joe looking inside, hey, I'll give it away in this at bat, but you come in, I'm ready to drop that some head on it. Is exactly what he did. I'm just surprised with Heron. He's had so much success pitching away, and then you're you're in a crucial part of the game with runners in scoring position. And now the Twins are back in the game by going away from what he'd been doing all game, which has worked the outer part of the plate. But in Joe's two previous as batters, away, 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 and then got him out. He struck him out the first time, I believe, on that split finger. And then his last at bat, three pitches away, and then he jammed him with that little cutter inside that Joe popped it up. So he starts him off with a fastball, and he said, okay, I'm going to come in this time, and Joe was ready for it. That's a fair ball. Great stop behind the bag by Kiaspo. He has no chance to get Willingham. He kept it from being a double, but the inning continues on Willingham's single. Ron, I think this thought process was a little different than that previous at bat with bases loaded, and, you know, when Joe came up in the third inning, then that one he said okay I went away it got strike one but then I'm going to try to go in. So I would agree with you I, and maybe he's looking for a double play ball to beat him inside with something you know and get that ground ball or but to me it just he's been so successful pitching away church you know it, it definitely leads to giving and giving the offense a chance with the three run homer. You hit the ball the other way. You really get a pound one to hit it out of here opposite field. Yeah, it wasn't a bad pitch that that Bauer hit. I think uh, Heron just wanted it in a little bit more. One and zero oh to Parmalee. This one squirted down the left field line and a long run for Wells. He's not going to get there, and the Twins will get the tying run to the plate in Danny Valencia. So Parmalee drops a single down the line. The Twins have one three-run home run this inning, and we'll see what Valencia can get done with. Two men on and two away. Yeah, fifth hit of the inning for the Twins. Spans. Uh, that ball had a lot of slice on it right there. Vernon Wells. You see, he can't catch up to it. Has to play it on the hop and get it back in. A lot of good things happen when you have a good approach at the plate. Even though you don't square the ball up, we saw Carroll let the ball get deep and. And Jamie hit one the other way and just kind of served it to right. Same thing with Parmalee, just kind of squirted one out there to left field, letting the ball get deep. If you if you let the ball get to you, Bert, you got a chance of at least getting you a knock. And so far this inning, we've seen a couple of those. Be interesting to see Danny if he can stay to the middle of the field or to right center with his approach on this at bat. And we'll see where the Angels pitch him. They've pitched him pretty much away all series long. Check swing, but he went on a slider away. Wilson again sitting off the plate. One and one. Just sitting here cataloging some of the best right-handed hitters I've seen, and of course we got Pujols playing in the game. And they all have that ability. All the great ones have the ability to pick up, it seems, as many RBIs to the right side of the field as to the left. Just off the plate, two and one. Well, I think that's what Ron was talking about to be a consistent hitter at the major league level. You just can't be a pull hitter. You have to hold, use the whole field. That ball just down on the way. Edgar Martinez, Maglio Ordonez did it for 15 years against the Twins. Well, his swing and three and a one. Guy that you said is looking for a job, Vladimir Guerrero. Yeah. You know, MVP. 
Yeah, you look at all the RBI guys that have played through the years that have been, you know, the guys that knock in 100 plus year in and year out. They use the whole field. Three and one to Valencia. He represents the tying run and he swings through strike two. Yeah, Heron went with a 3 1 breaking ball right there. Good location down. Danny, I'm sure, looking fastball. Willingham from second, Parmalee from first. They'll both break early here on the 3 2 pitch. He threw a 3 1, he could throw a 3 2. If Danny can shoot this ball to right center, he should get one to hit. Tapped it foul. And he came back with another breaking ball, and Danny got the barrel of the bat out a little bit too quick, but hit it foul. That little cutter. Yeah, that was definitely a short little slider for sure. Another 3 2 to Valencia. Got him. And the Twins score three, but leave two. Five hits in the inning, the biggest, a three run home run by Joe Maurer. Field. It is going to be mostly cloudy, however, showers are going to be possible, and it is going to little be a little breezy with winds up to about 20 miles per hour. Our first pitch coming in at 58 degrees. A beautiful afternoon here for mid April, I guess we'd call this uh, just a gorgeous day for baseball. And the Twins trying to climb back into the game after trailing six to nothing. Joe Mauer's home run has brought them half the way there. And now Alex Burnett will pitch out of the Twins bullpen. Yeah, Alex making his second appearance on the year. Burnett last year, 66 relief appearances for the Twins. And Alex uh, always uh, fun to pitch against a, a team like the Angels. Uh, he grew up uh, in in the Anaheim area. At least he got ahead of the catcher Bobby Wilson. Slow breaking ball and a beauty on the outside corner 0 and 2. Burnett did not have a good spring training. Pitched a couple innings, scoreless innings so far on the season in one outing. One and two. Alex with a fastball. He just saw the hard slider. The slower breaking ball he threw on the second pitch. I uh, haven't seen him throw that much. I have to ask him about that. That might be a newer pitch for him. And there it is again. Tapper toward the hole. Carroll comes up firing. And Parmalee can't quite dig that low throw out. And it's the third, second hit, third time that Bobby Wilson has reached base. 
That's a long throw for a shortstop right there out of the reach of Danny Valencia at third base. So it's Carroll that has to backhand it and then try to put something on it. Would have been a bang bang play if uh, Parmalee had been able to catch that ball. And always the hardest, I think, for a first baseman to try to get that little short hop and keep it in his glove. Here's Borges. A buck foul. Yeah, Burnett's always said that that last pitch I thought was a slider, Dick. You know that that Burnett threw, but he also has a curveball that he displays once in a while. Basically, coming out of that bullpen, it's hard for a reliever to throw all four of his pitches yeah. because you know you come into situations where you have to throw strikes. And if he had four pitches, he had command of, you'd be a starting mm -hmm. pitcher, wouldn't you? Yeah. I always thought you have to master one before you can try another one. There's a bunt and Burnett underhanded sacrifice for Borges and Wilson goes to second. Before Asturias comes to the plate, the first Crystal Farms Kids Day is Sunday. The Twins wrap up the homestand against Texas. Get to the game early for Kids Day autographs and free string cheese, courtesy of Crystal Farms. After the game, kids can run the bases on Target Field, presented by Gillette Children's Hospital. Tickets and more details available at TwinsBaseball.com. Well, the Angels trying to get one back here that the Twins. Gained on them in the bottom of the fifth. Here's his Sturis. Two singles and a strikeout against Liriano. And lifted foul and out of play. Yeah, Sturis now hitting as a left handed hitter. Twins actually out hitting the Angels nine to eight, but they've not done uh, as good a job as the Angels in cashing in and scoring opportunities. Another one lifted foul into the seats. And a call third strike. Great pitch by Burnett. His tour is called out. His second strikeout and has some parting words for DJ Rayburn. Yeah, fastball away of Sturis. Take a look at the pitch. Joe wants it away. And he holds it for a second. And DJ Rayburn taking a little of a Tom Hellion uh, school of uh, calling balls and strikes. There's Howie Kendrick. Now the Angels are supposed to be good, but at least in the game last night, after the game, the Twins could say, you know, our bullpen was a little bit better than theirs. That's what. That's when. That's when you'll know that the Twins uh, are competitive again, when they can say that more and more uh, after the game. Now, so far, the bullpen has pitched fairly well, but uh, you know, when the Twins were winning division championships, that was a foregone conclusion that their bullpen. Was better than most of the teams they were playing. Yeah, some great arms out there, and that's what the Twins are trying to do this year: is rebuild that bullpen. A lot of new faces. There's, There's that curveball. One and two. I don't remember him throwing as many of those as he has here this afternoon. Well, you know what? You have to change. You have to make the adjustment, and that's something that spring training. That's maybe why he had some bad outings. He had to keep working on it. And Try to develop that third pitch. Half swing, they'll appeal. No, says first base umpire Brian Onora. You know, Alex really doesn't have a straight change. Nothing that's going to, you know, say blow you away. But that curveball becomes like a changeup. Yeah, sure looked like Hendrick went too far. Two and two. Way out in the bullpen, they thought it was a strike. There's a strike. Cut the plate in half. And Burnett gives up an infield single, but strands a runner at second. It's still 6 3.
freeze cam of the Coors Light sixth inning. Well, you go back to the second inning when Vernon Wells hit a ball up the middle. Alexi Casilla, a nice play, even a nicer play by Chris Parmley, getting that little short hop and getting the out of Vernon Wells at first base. The Frost Brew, Coors Light, freeze cam. Well, we talked about the two bullpens. The Twins have turned the game over to Alex Burnett and others from here on out. And now after putting together five hits three runs in the fifth against Dan Heron the twins get into the angel bullpen. Now, Takahashi now last night Mike Sosha and some of the staff were kind of upset at Takahashi in the pitch selection of that changeup on an 0 2 pitch that he threw to Parmalee so Takahashi making another appearance here this afternoon of course. In last night's ball game Takahashi threw three pitches all for strikes but. Only one battery faced, just so happened to be Parmley's two run double down that right field line. And a left handed batter, Ben Revere, will lead things off. In Takahashi's first year with the Angels last year, left handers fared a whole lot better than right handers. Left handers hit him at a 261 clip, right handers just 206. So we talked at the time about the options Ron Gartenheyer had, perhaps in pinch hitting Parmley. Guys like uh, Trevor Plouffe. Uh, Luke Hughes. When in reality, the numbers would suggest you leave the left hander in there. Gardy wanted to build Chris Parmalee's confidence, right. and even though it fell to an 0 2 count, the, the rookie delivered. Yeah, he battled. He, he got a pitch, a change up in middle in, and he hit that ball down the right field line that Torrey Hunter almost lost his head on. But uh, a big hit for Parmalee last night. Down and away to Revere, one and one. And I mentioned last night, Dick, that you know if Parmley is going to be a big part of this season, you have to let him hit in situations like that, and he came through. One and one. Fouled away. Now one of Takahashi's biggest weapons, I think you called it a screwball. Checking with the twin staff afterwards, they called it a. Slow circle change. Same thing. Yeah. It's got some counter spin on it right. and, and will break into a left handed batter away from a right handed batter. But when you put a lefty in there, sometimes you can almost take that pitch away. Yeah, a Japanese pitcher always type of different delivery. You see the couple of hesitations in his uh, wind up. Ten seasons Takahashi pitched in Japan before signing with the Mets. In 2010, in his second season with the Angels. One and two to Revere. Off the plate, two and two. So Revere, Casilla, and Span, the three fastest runners the Twins have. And they'd love to get one, two, or all three of them on the bases here. Foul. Revere and Casilla started the third inning with singles. Span was retired, and then Carroll walked, but then Heron really uh, buckled down and got Maurer and Morno in the third. Yeah, Heron worked the first five innings, gave up nine hits, three runs all earned because of Joe Maurer's three run home run, a walk, and seven strikeouts. Two and two to Revere. Inside three and two. And Casilla on deck. Bouncer to the right side. Kendrick has an easy play. Revere retired one away. Time now for the Century Link high speed pitch. Uh, today's starting pitcher. Yeah, Dan Heron at 91, Liriano at 93. Both starters worked five innings. Liriano, five innings, seven hits, six runs, five earned with three walks and a couple strikeouts. Both gave up a home run. Liriano, a solo home run, and Dan Heron, a three run home run. Fastball. Missing someplace. Ball one. To see a single his first time up. Called out on strikes in the fifth. Popped up right side. Pujols with a play. 
crossing the line. Out number two. We'll bring up Span, but first. You can follow the Twins with MLB.com at Bat12 for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or Windows Mobile. Get live audio, pitch tracking, video highlights, and much more. Text at Bat to 31826 or visit TwinsBaseball.com for details. And now Span with a pair of hits and a run scored. Outside ball one. There's a strike. Swins will see a Japanese starting pitcher in the Texas series, Yu Darvish, scheduled to go on Saturday. You're doing that game, I believe. That's a big that box game, game. with uh, Mitch Williams. Sliced foul. They say he has seven pitches, so I'm going to be interested in uh, how Mike Napoli handles yeah, that. Right. Probably have to <laughs> grow a couple fingers real quick. There's the matchups here uh, against the Rangers starting tomorrow night. No earned run average for two of the three starters. Including Neftali Feliz on Sunday. So Nathan's had a couple of disappointing outings for the Rangers. They have two losses, and Nathan has both of them. Good. Third hit good. for Span. Good, good at bat again by Span. Boy, he waited back nicely and used his hands as third hit, and uh, almost like his last at bat in the fifth inning off of Dan Heron. A ball away, just shot that ball the other way. Look at the pitch, a slider, and Span went right with it. Kept those hands back nicely. Good concentration. And slapping it in the left field. No stride at all. Just the weight shift from his back, back leg to the front. Carroll singled his last time up. Singling uh, over the head of Pujols. Strike on the outside corner. Trying to extend the inning and getting Bauer to the plate here, who would represent the tying run if Carroll can get on base. Let's see if uh, maybe Span can get a good jump off of Takahashi right here. Pretty quick home. Two strikes. Span last year, of course, limited playing time because of the concussion, played the 70 ball games, did steal six bases and seven attempts, but. Good numbers in his career 73 stolen bases been caught 22 times. <laughs> Takahashi looks like he's pretty quick home. Throw over and this man dives back. Two strikes to Carroll. Yeah, Pujols not your typical first baseman that kind of straddles the bag to hold a runner on. He's he's off the bag three or four feet, stands in front of the bag on the dirt. They loosened uh, that rule up significantly about 10, 12 years ago. Throw over, Span getting back. Yeah, it used to have to be, you know, where you at least where you were pretty much straddling the bag or near the bag. Now, you know, like you said, they loosened it up that he can kind of step out a little bit. Everything for the pitcher. How does that benefit the pitcher? Well, pull holes can feel the ground ball, maybe the he might not be able to field if he were guarding the bag. Even though he's off the bag, a pitcher can still throw over there. Everything for the pitcher. 
That's a first. <laughs> One and two to Carroll. Just off the inside corner. And again, Wilson froze that pitch, hoping to get the call. Two and two. Not a bad pitch right here. Fastball in. Wilson sitting inside. Maybe a little low and inside. Too. Remember back in the third inning, Carroll fell behind and then he ended up working out a walk that filled the bases. And he's trying to get Mauer to the plate here with a chance perhaps to hit another three run home run to tie the game. Now Pujols will play a deep first base. Span should get a good jump. Torrey Hunter again playing very shallow in right field. Goes and Carroll takes high his team leading fifth walk. And in the case of the two walks here today, he fell behind and did a nice job earning the walk. Here's our Coors Light cold hard blast. Uh, came off the bat of Joe Mauer against Dan Heron. A slider didn't get in far enough. Joe, a line drive, three run home run. Cut the deficit to six to three. So far today, the Twins are just one for eight with men in scoring position, but the one was a big one. Mauer clubbing his first home run of the year. Just his second in this ballpark. We'll see what he can do here. He's come up with men in scoring position all four times here today. Span was at third with one out in the first. Bases were loaded with one out in the third. Deposited the three run homer in the fifth and in the sixth. Kevin Jepson warming up in the Angel bullpen. Fouled away. Howard tried to turn on a fastball that time. And flicked it foul. A ball up in the strike zone just a little bit. Joe got underneath it. One strike to Mauer. One and one. Takahashi took the loss in the ball game last night facing just the one man. First two men were retired here in the sixth. How about Jeff Gregg? He threw one pitch, got the win. <laughs> After Pavano threw 101 pitches, Jeff Gray came in, threw one pitch, and ended up getting his second major league win. Swing and a miss with Maurer trying to straighten out another fastball. Fastball clocked here at 89. Two aggressive swings by Maurer, but I think the Twins would like to see more of that. Even though he, you know, swung and missed, he was trying to drive the ball, maybe tie the game up. We'll see what Takahashi gives him on one-two, and what kind of swing Maurer puts on it. I bet it doesn't throw a changeup down and in. <laughs> Grounded to short. And Maurer safe at first. Asturias for some reason hesitated, and the inning will continue. And Morno will have a chance with the bases loaded. I don't know if Pujols was late getting to the bag. Maybe he thought they were going to throw it to second base for the force out, but uh, Asturias double clutched. Maurer hustled down that line and beat the throw. So Maurer kept running. Don't know if he was going to maybe flip to second, and uh, Kendrick was late getting there. It looked like he was wound up ready to throw to first, but double pumped. I'm wondering if Pujols, he was playing a deep first base. He didn't think Pujols was going to get there in time. Hesitated. By that time, it was too late. So they're loaded up for Morno with the Twins filling the bases up after two were gone, and Morno will have a chance against Kevin Jepson. Rarity here, left handed batter up, and the Angels bring in a right hander.
Hour right here. You see, you see where Kendrick's playing, so he's not going to get to second base. And Pujols was playing a deep first base, but he was over there in time. Watch Pujols right here. He's going to the bag, and for some reason, Asturias double clutched, and that allowed Joe Mauer to get the infield base hit to load the bases. Looked like Asturias had a good grip on the ball. Yeah. It wasn't loose in his hand at all. Yeah. So a chance for the Twins here with Morno at the plate. The base is full and they were filled after the second out. Yeah, Kevin Jepson coming out of the bullpen. He worked here on Monday afternoon. He threw 10 pitches, six for strikes, and one shot out inning. He did give up a base hit. That to Josh Willingham. Outside ball one. The Twins had a great chance in the third inning. Bases loaded. One out. Didn't get a run there. They had a leadoff double in the first. And didn't score. And now a two out opportunity in the sixth. And Morno hoping to deliver a big two out run producing hit. Two and oh. Well, we talked about Jepson here on Monday, Dick, a guy that has a great fastball. It's a secondary pitch that he's been unable to really control that has kind of put him back and forth uh, between Triple A and the big leagues over the last three or four years. A hitter's count. Morno at the plate. Swing and a miss. Jepson challenged Justin. Justin swung right through it. Lifted to left. And Wells in the corner ends the inning. The Twins threaten. They leave the bases full for the second time this afternoon. Scoring the first six runs uh, of the game. Yeah, Mark Trumbo took uh, Liriano deep in the uh, five run third second inning for the Angels take a five nothing lead. Twins had a couple chances to get back into the ball game by scoring some runs, but they have just not been able to get that big hit. The big hit in the ball game so far for the Twins off the bat of Joe Maurer, a big three run home run in the fifth inning. Grand Casino story of the game. As we move now to the seventh inning, Alex Burnett facing Albert Pujols. Pujols 0 for 3. He's been hitting the ball in the air here today. The first two games, he hit the ball on the ground a lot. Just one base hit so far in the series. 2 and 0. Burnett pitched a good sixth inning, got a couple of strikeouts after a leadoff single. Now he'll face the three, four, and five batters. Off 
a leg. Two and one. A looping base hit to left is only hit in 11 at bat so far. Yeah, it did pick up an RBI with that base hit in last night's ball game. Good slider right there. I mentioned the Twins will see an awful lot of the Angels in the early going here, and the hope is they'll be able to pitch as well in uh, Anaheim at the end of this month, early May, and then back here the week after that. Inside, he tried to clip the inside corner. Full count. Bouncer to Shard. Easy play for Carroll. One down. Good pitch right there. Fastball down, and Pujols kind of reached out, just hit that ground ball. Tried to go fastball in on a 2 2 pitch. And then the ball down. You can see Joe wanted it in, but still down in the strike zone on Pujols. A ground ball out. And now Hunter 0 for 3. Last year and so far this year, Hunter's really hit Twins pitching well, but so far hitless this afternoon. And a first pitch strike. Saying that Tory Hunter went around too far. Burnett ahead in the count. A couple strikeouts in his last inning for Alex Burnett. Foul back. Tory signed his deal with the Angels, and his deal will expire at the end of this season. No contract talks have uh, existed. About yeah. an extension. Yeah, Tory's come out and said, "Hey, I'd like to stay where I'm at." Well, he settled into Anaheim very nicely. Just missed the corner one and two. He's acknowledged. He understands uh, the priorities in place for the Angels. They are discussing a, a deal with Eric Ibar, an important part of their lineup. Just missing the inside corner. Two well, one two. thing I think uh, we all know: Torrey Hunter over his 16 seasons at the major league level, this guy's a leader. Leads by example, on the field and off the field. Got him. Mauer tags him two down. Been a really good outing for Alex Burnett. Yeah, Alex picking up his third strikeout. Yeah, that might have been the curveball right there rather than the slider. Right. Just a good tight rotation on that pitch. Here's Trumbo. A couple of runs scored, a home run, a walk, a stolen base. Hunter's future with the Angels might in some way be dictated by what happens with Mark Trumbo. When they signed Pujols, even though Trumbo had his great season last year as a first baseman. They move Trumbo over to third base. He has not played there in this series. He's committed some errors. He handled things pretty well in spring training. But I find it yeah. significant that in this three game series, we haven't seen Trumbo at third base at all. They may end up moving him to the outfield. But they also have Mike Trout, another yeah. promising young yeah. number one pick for the Angels that uh, did well last year when he got called up in AAA. One and one. When you can hit the ball as far as Trumbo can and put together a full season that he did last year, they'll find some place for him. But it'll be interesting to see how much time he actually spends at third base, how much time he spends as a designated hitter. Snap bat, the bouncer to short. Carroll to Parmalee and Alex Burnett's retired six in a row. A couple of very good innings for the right handed reliever.
by McDonald's. Right now, you can get 20 crispy chicken McNuggets for just $4.99 at McDonald's. And by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. One clutch hit for the Twins, but they've needed a couple more, and they haven't gotten them yet. We'll see what they can do to get something started again here in yeah, the Yeah, still plenty of time left. Twins just need to continue to get base runners on. They've left ten men on base. Including the bases full twice. Mm -hmm. One and oh to Josh Willingham. And a strike one and one. Willingham base hit his last time up. A couple of strikeouts. Three home runs on the year. Already in his first year with the Twins. Outside. The three home runs tied for the league lead with Jonas Cespedes of the A's. Ian Kinsler of the Rangers and Miguel Cabrera of the Tigers. Home run swing and a miss, two and two. Now, what you're going to get from Jepson is nothing but hard, hard fastball, hard slider. Two and two. Just off the plate of full count, Parmalee on deck. And a fastball clocked at 98. Just off the plate. Wilson framed it for a second. Seen that pitch get called and then not called. A drive to left. Wells to the fence. Gone number four for Willingham. <laughs> they can't find the home run ball. They went into the flowers, but Josh Willingham got another fastball middle in and so quick and so strong. The ball just jumps off his bat for his fourth home run of the year. And it's a six to four ball game. I think we'll see it come off the end of the bat. He didn't really get the sweet spot of the bat on it. And got a high fly ball that dropped into the flowers. Parmalee swings and misses. That's where that previous pitch that was called a ball. You know, as a pitcher, you come back in and too much of the plate. Measured at 346 feet, one of the shortest home runs you can hit to left field here. Parmalee drives it to the gap. That's down for a hit. Borges cuts it off. Parmalee digs for second. And he's in with a double. The Twins making some noise here in the seventh. Good piece of hitting right there by Parmalee, just getting that pitch and just going with it. Ball kept sl slicing away from the speedy Borges in center field. Does a good job of cutting it off, but Parmley a double, his first double of the year. Yeah, fastball away. It's got something on it, but Parmley saying, I'm not going to try to pull it, I'll just go with it. And Borges gets it back in quickly, but Parmley with a double. Trip to the mound by Mike Butcher with now Valencia. For the second time in as many at bats representing the tying run. Came up in the fifth with runners at first and second in a 6 3 game and struck out. Heron uh, left the ball game right after that. And now he comes up here in a similar spot in the seventh. Well, one thing I think we've seen here today, even though the Twins are down by a couple runs, Dick, we've seen a little bit of what Ron Gardenhire was talking about the last couple of weeks of spring training. These guys were swinging a bat in spring training. Didn't see that in Baltimore. Really didn't see it in that first game. But the last couple of ball games, the offense relaxing a little bit and picking up some base hits and some extra base hits. Nobody out here in the seventh. In essence, a leadoff double. Nobody out. The Twins need to get Parmalee home. Strike one. They had this situation in the first and didn't get it done. And now Valencia. 
This is where Ron Coomer talked about it earlier. If you're going to pitch you away, just hit it the other way. Get find a way to get Parmley over to third if you can. Slap hitting Ben Revere on deck. Here's uh, the incoming flight of Willingham's fourth home run right in the middle of the flowers just over the wall. Well, he didn't look like it didn't even disturb the flowers. Hit it right between the buckets. To the yeah. right side and through. Parmalee to third. They're going to hold him up. Hunter with an errant throw. A terrible throw by Torrey. And that will allow Valencia to go to second. You don't see Torrey Hunter make many no. mistakes like that. And now the tying run in scoring position because of the mistake. Yeah, Torrey, uh, you know, kind of wiping his hand like uh, that. Maybe that ball slipped out. But uh, yeah, an errant throw by Hunter. You don't do not see that. He knows baseball better than anybody. And fundamentals, what you want to do. Now Kendrick, kind of, you know, there's that exact swing that Ron Coomer was talking about. Good fast, just went with it, kind of froze Kendrick, and then Torrey comes up and just air mails it toward. The catcher Wilson that allows Danny to go from first to second. Here's Revere tying run at second. Outside ball one. You're right about Kendrick freezing. His body weight was toward the middle because everyone anticipates Valencia to pull the ball or hit the middle or hit it up the middle. They don't expect him to push it to right field. Well, I hit that ball so sharply too. It probably jumped on him. He didn't. He just didn't react quickly. Slice foul. So Revere in a big spot now. He's not uh, considered to be an RBI man, but he's out of situation here where a hit to the outfield might tie the game. Nobody out. Well, it, run it even second. a ground ball to second or first would be good because hopefully Parmley would score and then Danny would get over to third base. That squirted down the line. Running catch by Wells and Parmley will not tag. Shading Revere down the left field line. Wells was able to get there and left home plate. That looked like that was an extra base hit. Uh, Wells was shading him toward that left field line because of the hard up. And Ben Revere took it the other way. And Parmley was tagging up. He went back to tag up right here. But the ball not hit deep and Wells, three time gold glove winner, got it back in quickly. So Parmley stayed at third base. Casilla will be lifted for Burroughs. Twins haven't uh, had many pinch hitting opportunities. Burroughs. Has had uh, one pinch hit appearance. He's 0 for 1. Just three at bats on the season. And with Burroughs being announced, Mike Sosha is coming out as Scott Downs has been warming up in the bullpen for the Angels. But uh, in this case, maybe the Angels took the bait. We'll see whether Burroughs actually hits or not.
runs, and it started early. Yeah, that in Baltimore, a two-run home run in game one on opening night. Monday here, got a fastball. And in the last night's ball game, well, how many games do the Twins play here? 81 ball games? You know, it's a whole yeah, lot of game. game. Yeah, what the heck? And we just saw this one right here. 11 of the last 17 Twins batters have reached base. It will be Luke Hughes who will hit for Burroughs, who is going to hit for Casilla against Scott Downs. Well, Scott Downs making his second appearance in this three game series. He worked here on Monday afternoon, one shutout inning, threw 19 pitches, 13 for strikes. Downs, a veteran of 11 major league seasons, his second season with the Angels. Tying run at second, one away. Hughes' first pinch hitting appearance of the year. Had a good spring training with a lot of power. A high fly to left center field. Toward the gap. Borges and Wells converge. It's Borges who hangs on to the ball despite colliding with Wells. A sacrifice fly. Making it a one run ball game, but they nearly had a collision. A disastrous one in the game. Well, they, they collided with their gloves. It was Vernon Wells and Bor Borges out there. Borges taking control. Vernon Wells tried to cut in front of him. And Hughes jumps on that first pitch. Parmley scores. But watch Borges right here. Somehow kept that ball in the glove. They both reached for it yep. at the same time. Yeah, made contact with the gloves, but the ball stayed in the glove of Borges. But Luke Hughes picks up the RBI, and the game is now six to five. Is there a fourth hit in Denard Span's afternoon? Inside, ball one. A double in the first, a single in the fifth, another single in the sixth. The double was pulled into the corner. The singles have gone to left. Inside again, 2 and 0. Oh. Wins taking advantage again of what has been a susceptible Angel bullpen. Yeah, here. good box score right here in our in game box score. Brought to you by Burger King. 2 and 0 oh to span. Strike on the outside corner. night the twins got a big two out hit from Jamie Carroll they're looking for one here from span little dribbler who's going to get to the bag span is safe the game is tied downs has been spiked span is all right and downs is crippled at first base yeah, Downs has to hustle over there, and then there's a bang bang play. I think Bernard Span stepped on his foot. The game is tied. Span and everyone concerned about Scott Downs, who stepped on the bag, it appeared, as Span reached for the base. Always a tough play for a pitcher to get over there, especially when you're looking for that shovel pass from the first baseman. That being Albert Pujols right here. Span hustling down the line. Downs knows he's got to get over there, look for the ball, and then hope that his foot's near the bag. Well, it was. It looked like Span tripped over him. Right there. Oh. Contact. Oh, my. The spikes right on the back of the heel in the Achilles area. Ouch. Oh, my. oh boy. That's a terrible looking injury. Span appears to be okay. And 
Yeah, last we'll thing hope, you we'll want to do as a pitcher is put your foot on top of that bag, but that's a tough play when you're looking for the ball and trying to find the bag at the same time. And Span, believe me, I mean, he's just trying to find the bag. It just so happened that that Downs' foot was right on the bag. The best thing I've seen today is what I'm watching right now. Span, under his own power, limps off the field, but uh, Downs rather. But that could have been a devastating injury, and, and that's the. I hope he's all right. Yeah. Rick Smith, the trainer out there with him. He will come out of the game, and a new angel pitcher will come in and get enough time uh, to warm up as the pitcher feels is necessary. But my goodness, that could have been a devastating injury for Downs. Three in the fifth, and now three in the seventh, and the Twins have finally tied it up. By Burger King, the proud sponsor of opening week baseball. Twins won their first ball game last night, and they came from behind a couple of times against the Angels, and now they've come back from 6 0 to even this game at 6. A four hit game for Denard Span. Yeah, the 12th career four hit game for Denard Span, and uh, you know, you, it's an outstanding afternoon. I, you can almost see on his face he's still worried about uh, Scott Downs. He, you know that's not an intentional play. You go for hustle for the bag. It just so happened that you know, Downs his uh, right ankle was uh, right there when uh, he made contact with the bag. Span here this afternoon started off the ball game bottom of the first inning with a double his first extra base hit of the year in the fifth inning. Adding a base hit the left field and then taking another nice pitch. From Takahashi the other way, and then the infield base hit right here. The RBI infield's hit that ties the game at six apiece. Rich Thompson will come out of the Angel bullpen. He is the third relief pitcher for the Angels today. Fourth relief pitcher, I should say. They've used both their lefties, Jepson earlier, and now Thompson. Yeah, Thompson in his second inning of re or second appearance on the season. Pitch in that Kansas City series where the Angels opened with the Royals in Anaheim. Thompson, 27 years old, in the sixth season with the Angels. Last year, 44 relief appearances, a 1 and 3 record with an ERA at 3, and 54 innings pitched. Can join Brian Dunsing, Matt Katz, and Glenn Perkins for the first installment of Baseball Unplugged tonight. From 5:30 to 7 at Brothers Bar and Grill in downtown Minneapolis, get up close and personal with three key members of the Twins pitching staff and enjoy a night of baseball family fun. For more information on age restrictions and the autograph policy, please visit TwinsBaseball.com. Baseball Unplugged tonight at Brothers Bar and Grill. I'm just reading the media guide on Rich Thompson, and they have his stats from last year. Like I said, one and three and. 54 innings pitched, uh, 20 walks, 56 strikeouts in 54 innings, and 102 wild pitches. 
That's in their media guys. All right, let's get a few of those here. <laughs> I think that might be a misprint. But I'll tell you what, uh, you know, our our media guide, any media guide, the, the amount of work that goes into putting a media guide together is incredible. So great job, everybody. Carroll has reached his last three times. Apparel walks in a single, and of course, a lot of teams like to run right away when a relief pitcher comes into the game, figuring the relief pitcher is kind of focused on the batter. And uh, Thompson throws over there at least once. Yeah, Thompson with a fastball, curveball, hard slider, and a split finger he uses as a changeup. Finally, tie it up a three run fifth, a three run seventh. Spans hustle, beating out a hit, allowing Valencia to come in from third with the sixth run. Span goes. The pitch, a called strike, and Span is in with a steal. So the go ahead run now in scoring position for Jamie Kelly. Yeah, Denard Span got a great jump on a breaking ball, and the Twins steal their first base of the year. In their first attempt, Denard Span picks up a stolen base. Well, the Angels got what five steals five, today? Yep, yep. Span can see. Doesn't look in. He just hustles right to second base and steals the base. Carroll got the game-winning hit in last night's game. See what he can do here to maybe get Span in from second base. Swing and a foul. 0-2. Better in that category in the later innings here today. The inning started with Willingham's fourth home run of the season. It was blocked by Wilson, one and two. So neither starter. Pitch particularly well, and neither starter is involved in the decision. Aaron had four shutout innings, but then gave up five hits in the fifth. And Joe Maurer, the big blow, the three run home run in the fifth inning. Carroll wastes a pitch, flipping it foul. No style points here today, but a nice comeback for the Twins and a winnable ball game here as they have a chance to take their first lead today in the seventh inning. And Carroll strikes out. Span left at second. But the inning started with the second home run hit by the Twins today, the fourth of this young season for Josh Willingham, and we're even at six.
The Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. Light rail. It's so many Twins fans here to the ballpark. Angels got the first six runs, the Twins the next six. So we go to the eighth inning now. Jared Burton comes into the ball game for the Twins. Yeah, Burton, uh, a new addition to the bullpen this year for the Twins. Last year with the Cincinnati Reds, appeared in only six ball games. He had shoulder surgery. Still uh, kind of recovering from that, but uh, Burton had uh, shoulder surgery last year at this time, right shoulder surgery. Twins signed him as a free agent over the winter. Luke, Luke Hughes in at second base. It'll be Vernon Wells, Alberto Cayaspo, and Bobby Wilson scheduled to hit here in the eighth inning. Wells with a double his last time up, driving in. Mark Trumbo for the sixth Angel run. Down the middle of strike. Wells looks back at DJ Rayburn. Yesterday, the Twins announced that Scott Baker will not pitch for them this year. We'll have some. Uh, elbow surgery, not the Tommy John surgery, but a significant surgery that will uh, keep him from pitching this year. And that news yesterday will impact the Twins bullpen. Anthony Swarzak, Liam Hendricks will be asked to pitch until one or the other establishes himself as the replacement for Baker. Right now, they're both needed. There's a base hit to center field. They're both needed because. Jason Marquis isn't back with the club yet. At some point soon, the Twins hope that'll happen. Yeah, Marquis scheduled a pitch today uh, in Double A New Britain. Hopefully, he, that pitch count can get up to 100, and hopefully, he can join the club in, uh, I believe, what, five days or four days? I think you have to be down there for 10 days overall. Well, the Twins have really been impressed with Anthony Swarzak, who right now is in the rotation, but at some point might settle into the role we're seeing Burton in right now. Now Wells picks up his second hit to the and Burton facing his second batter. Wells got a base hit. Yaspo lifts one to right field. Revere has it measured. And Kayaspo retired on one pitch. Now Burton with a fastball, hard slider, and a changeup. Pretty good numbers at the major league level. Ten wins, three losses in his time with the Cincinnati Reds. Over five seasons up and down, but a very good 3.41 ERA. Kendry Morales will hit for Bobby Wilson as the Angels make a catching change. Wilson, so must be saying, hey, what do I got to do? Not known as a hitter, he has two singles and a walk and three plate appearances. Now with Morales being announced, Brian Dunsing will be called into the ball game to pitch to Kendry Morales. And another pitching change in the middle of this top of the eighth inning.
lot of new faces and the way this game is going we may see them all today yeah i mean you, you know brian dempson coming into the ball game now but alex burnett two shot out innings and he really helped to allow the twins to get back into this ball game we just saw burton baloney a left-handed reliever along with gray who picked up his uh, in a, his first american league win last night his second career win so yeah some new faces Dunsing a year ago was in the rotation, so he's actually a new face to the bullpen uh, at this time of the year. And he'll come in for the third time this season. Yeah, Dunsing, a couple strikeouts in an inning and a third so far in relief. And one thing you do is you move Morales from the left side of the uh, batter's box to the right side of the batter's box. Before his injury, he's very good from both sides of the plate, but since his return to the lineup, he's 0 for 6. With three strikeouts from the right side. And with a left hander on the mound, too, a little bit easier to keep that runner honest at first. Lifted foul into the seats, one strike. Last night, Glenn Perkins came in and pitched a brilliant eighth inning. And now Dunsing trying to get the last two outs of the eighth here this afternoon. Down and away, one and one. <laughs> Foul back one and two. Dunsing in Baltimore in a key spot. Struck out a left handed batter and a right handed batter. And ultimately, his success as a reliever, everyone expects him to be able to handle left handed batters fine. He's always done that, but his success in this role will be his ability to get Morales out here and then hopefully Borges behind him. Swing. Did he go? They'll appeal. No. That tried to go in on Morales. Morales almost went too far. He did not go. And it's two and two. Lifted to the right field corner. Long run for Revere. Makes the catch out number two. Yeah, Revere and his speed almost overran that ball. He kind of had to put the brakes on to catch that ball. Hustled over there. See, he's saying that ball kind of went back and forth. It's ben go over there. He thinks he's, you know, looking where it's at. And all of a sudden the ball came back a little bit. So the switch hitter Morales has been retired and now Borges who's had a very impactful series here at least the last two games. A three run inside the park home run the RBI double and the run scored dropped down a sacrifice his last time up. And Dunson gets ahead. He touched on a critical point in this game and that is Alex Burnett coming out of the pen and giving the twins two. Very sharp innings of relief. Mm -hmm. Now Dunsing trying to get this game to the bottom of the eighth, tied at six. Mm -hmm. 
one and one. Jeff Gray warming up. Get in at back to back games after his one pitch effort last night. One and one to Peter Borges. Good change up. One and two. Gets by Maurer and Wells will advance to second base. The ball trickled into the dugout. And so Dunsing firing one in the dirt looked like it went right between the legs of Maurer. Yeah, tried to go with a breaking ball down and in, and Joe unable to knock it down and keep it in front of him. And it'll be a wild pitch charged to Dunsing. So the go ahead run now, though, in scoring position. And the count 2 2 to Borges. Popped up over the Twins dugout and out of play. Two and two to the Angel center fielder. And Dunson steps off. Ah, Dunsing set. Going back inside again. Tore the hole and threw. Mm. Charged by Willingham. Wells is going to come around and score, and the Angels take the lead in the wild pitch. A key play allowing Wells to get into scoring position. And well, Borges they, does it yeah, again. Well, they wanted to come inside and not inside far enough. Borges opening up and hitting that ball past the infield. Into left field. See that ball left out over the plate. Mauer sitting middle in. Borges just dropping a barrel of a bat and his speed. As well scores and a run comes toward home plate. He scoots into second base. So an RBI base hit, second RBI of the ball game for Peter Borges. And now Meiser Asteris. Behind first, that's going to be a tough play. Revere hustling, and in foul ground, he dropped it. A foul ball. Got his glove on it, but couldn't gather it in. Yeah, just hit the heel of his glove and then trickled out of the glove. Had to go a long way for this ball. You see, he hit the heel of his glove. That wasn't fouled by much. So Asturis with his bat very much uh, at bat very much alive. One and one. Two 
twenty six at bats with men in scoring position in this game. Two and one. Check swing. Appeal. And a strike this time. Two and two. So far for Asturias, two singles, two strikeouts. Dunson trying to get the Twins off the field. Three and two with Kendrick on deck. Gray has warmed up. This I suspect is going to be Dunsing's last hitter one way or the other. Well, let's get it out right here. Captain Foul. Dunsing's 18th pitch to his third batter. And he walked him. And Dunsing's upset because now the inning continues. Kendrick will come to the plate and Dunsing will be removed for Jeff Gray. So Ron Gardenhier coming out with the right hand hitting Kendrick do up 0 for 3 with a walk on the day. Kendrick's fifth plate appearance will be against Jeff Gray. A one run lead in the eighth inning, and we have no shortage of storylines for our post game show. We hope you'll stay with us for Twins Live presented by CenturyLink. Looking at the Twins fighting back down 5 0 after 2 and 6 0 in the fifth inning, but they made a game of it here. We'll also get Ron Gardenhire's comments after the game, and our instructional on the field will be the pitchers covering first base. We saw Scott Downs of the Angels leave the game after he was stepped on by Denard Span, and so Bert, you'll be part of our instructional today in oh the good who's going to step on me and taking uh, that's Ron Coomer's responsibility oh good taking the right routes and covering the right part of the base an intricate part of the game covering first base for a pitcher today They're always a dangerous play thank you very much Marty we saw that with Scott Downs and hopefully uh, you know they might be watching our ball game in the clubhouse hopefully he's okay absolutely yep remember uh, was it game seven of the 87 World Series Joe McGrain had a he wasn't hurt but he never did touch first base and the twins ended up yeah, you almost have to be like former angel Chuck Finley just go over there and just fall on the bag. <laughs> but here's Jeff Gray he got the win in last night's ball game, his second major league win his other win coming in 2009 when he was a member of the Chicago White Sox. Borges at second Mysterious at first. Outside ball one. 
On last night's ball game, he used only one pitch to retire the out, and then the Twins came back and won the ball game, and he got the win. So here he might need two pitches right here to get a win. I'd like to get Kendrick because Pujols is much as he's uh, been sleeping. ineffective exactly you won't, don't want him uh, coming sleeping up here with, giant yeah. with men on base chopper to short and that's the end of the top of the eighth inning the angels retake the lead at seven six. Angels are going to need to do it again today. Well, in the seventh inning, it was Josh Willingham that got the uh, Twins on the board, uh, the fourth run, and then Twins proceeded to get three more hits. The double by Parmalee, Danny Valencia with a base hit, and then Bernard Spann with the infield base hit. Sacrifice fly right there, scored Parmalee. Bauer takes inside, ball one. And then Spann's uh, infield base hit. RBI score tied the game at six apiece. Thompson got the last out of the seventh. He'll face Maurer, Morno, and Willingham. No activity in the Angel bullpen. Breaking ball over for a strike. Maurer hit the three run home run. He hit what we thought was going to be an inning ending ground ball to Asturias, but Asturias. Double clutched on his throw and Maurer got an infield hit. Pulled, tapped, foul, one and two. Thompson, 27 years old from Hornsby, Australia, signed by the Angels in 2002. One and two to Maurer. Lace to right field, his third hit of the ball game. So Thompson gave him a breaking pitch, and Maurer jumped all over it. And he hung it right there, just a breaking ball that left up, and Joe could swing. Line drive base hit. Justin Morneau adjusting to life as a designated hitter, and he will tell you the biggest adjustment. He has to make in between at bats, not letting a frustrating at bat carry over into the next at bat. He's had four opportunities here in the ball game. Actually, he came up after Maurer's home run and no one on base. He left the bases full in the third and again in the sixth and left a runner at third with two out in the first. So, this is the ultimate challenge for the designated hitter. Realizing he'd have one more chance, at least one more here in the eighth. Checked his swing, and it's 2 0. Oh. 
Ionetta now behind the plate as Wilson was pinched hit for by Morales. And he hung one on Morno and he lifted it foul over his left shoulder. Well, I think Roy Smalley, Ron Coomer, Tim Laudner, or other analysts would all tell you hitting's about timing. And Justin, we've seen some pitches that Justin has just missed. Now, ball a little bit high, but we've seen Justin. Almost beyond the ball, make that con solid contact. He's very, very close. Three to right, right field, there. and there it goes. Like that. He got his chance in the eighth, <laughs> and boy, did he take advantage Unbelievable. of it. Unbelievable. He did not miss that one. The Eminem boys put it together. Mauer's base hit, and then Justin with his first home run, his first two runs batted in, and the Twins take an 8-7 to seven lead. Here's Willingham, ball one. An afternoon of frustration, and he wanted one more chance, and he got it. And what every guard he told him right there put a big <laughs> smile on Justin's face. First lead of the game for the Twins. And oh, Willingham with a rocket off the glove of Kiaspo. He has his third hit. Well, let's take a look at the pitch from Rich Thompson right down Broadway. and. Justin did not miss it. Exhaling as he makes contact. Yeah, Kiaspo also on that. He better check his leather on his glove. Willingham hit a P that in and out of his glove. Well, the Twins again doing some damage against the Angel bullpen. And I think one thing we've seen, Bert, both. Jason Isringhausen and Latroy Hawkins have had great careers, but at this point in their careers, they may not be capable of pitching in back-to-back -back ball games because Thompson's been left out there. There's still no activity in the Angel bullpen. Oh, Matt Katz getting loose. Parmalee with a big double in the three-run seventh. A hook outside. Joe Maurer with three hits in a ball game. Justin with that big two run home run and Josh Hamill or excuse me Willingham a home run with a couple base hits. Down and in and it's two and one. Eighteen hits for the Twins so far eight runs. Two and two. And you know what this means, don't you? That if Matt Caps comes on and gets the save, Jeff Gray will have thrown three pitches <laughs> in this series, in this uh, well, last two happens. games of this series, and gotten two wins. The vulture. Parmalee waves at a breaking pitch, one away. Thompson picking up his second strikeout in relief. It was a straight changeup. Yeah, it might have been that split finger. Yeah. Well, here's Valencia. A couple of big base hits for the Twins. Shot went through the right side of the infield his last time up. And again, they keep pitching him away. Valencia skipped a one hopper past Kendrick who seemed to be shifting to his right and he never was able to, to make that step to the left. Yeah I don't I don't even know I mean he hit it so hard I don't know if even Kendrick had you know gone that Ooh. way directly he would have been able to uh, get that ball. Willingham took two three 
Larsonis steps towards second base and then stopped while Thompson was in the stretch position. Two and oh. Missing inside three and oh with Revere on deck. Thompson has struck out two, given up three hits and two runs. And they're all seated in the Angel bullpen. That's down the line and fair. Willingham rounds second on his way to third. They're going to wave him in. Wells picks the ball up. Fires home. It's cut off. Valencia can scamper back to the bag with an RBI double. A three run eighth. What a game for the Twins. Down five nothing, down six nothing, and all of a sudden here come the bats. And my goodness, a lot of hits for the Twins. Now 19 hits. Danny Valencia picks up his third hit of the ball game on an RBI double. He picks up his first RBI of the year. Twins take a 9 to 7 lead. See Steve Little right there positioning himself, watching Wells pick up the ball and sends Josh Willingham home for the third run of the inning. So some threes on the board for the Twins. Three runs in the bottom of the fifth, the seventh, and so far here in the eighth. One thing maybe when you get down on the field, ask Ron Coomer who spent some time at first base. They had Valencia hung up between second and third, and most teams, I know the Twins do, they have their first baseman trailing the runner into second base, but Pools was nowhere to be found. Now right. maybe the Cardinals did things differently. Maybe the Angels do things differently. Revere taps out, and that's out number two with Valencia going to third. And that'll bring up Luke Hughes. So a three run eight, a two run lead for the Twins. The Twins got it tied in the seventh in part because Luke Hughes made a pinch hitting appearance and lifted a sacrifice fly to the gap in left center. Big swing and a miss. Well, 16 of 26 last hitters for the Twins have reached safely. Yeah, Dick, you were just talking about Albert Pujols not going to second base and them having Danny kind of hung out to dry almost to the shortstop position after the double. You know, there are times when the ball's hit down the left field line, his first baseman can kind of be the swing guy and, and come all the way down the third base line to be that cutoff. But with that ball not going all the way to the corner, Albert's got nothing to do but just like right. you said, trail trail the runner into second base. They you know they'd be out of the inning right now. Well, a lot of times, Ron, won't you see? Here's a base hit right here by Luke Hughes, and the fourth run of the inning in the bottom of the eighth scores. Valencia comes in from third, and it's a three-run lead for the Twins as they're still hitting in the bottom of the eighth. I was going to say, Ron Coomer, sometimes you'll see an outfielder. Say right field, Torrey Hunter sometimes will come in and cover the bag because he's also not in the play. Well, Bert, just like we've always talked about, all three of us, there's always a place for you to be on, a, on the field when something happens and the ball's hit. And if there's a base unoccupied by a defensive player, whether you're the right fielder or the first baseman, you can go somewhere and be involved in the play. And that just shows you right there where, you know, Albert probably drifted into the middle of the infield and was kind of in no man's land and it ended up costing them an out. And a run right now because Luke Hughes picked up his second RBI. Span already with four hits. He takes a strike and takes another one. And Rich Thompson simply got to wear it. Apparently, Jason Isringhausen, Latroy Hawkins, because they pitched last night, unavailable to pitch today. The only other available reliever is their closer, Walden. Two strikes. Span takes outside. 
And really the game changed when Kelly Downs was hurt. You can imagine as effective as he's been against the Twins, Downs would have been asked to pitch through the Carroll at bat, through the Maurer and Morno at bats, right. and he had to leave because of injury, and Thompson had to come in. One and two to span. Two and two. Thompson has thrown 32 pitches in his relief appearance. He's faced eight men but retired just three of them. Well, Span looking for his fifth hit. He has done it twice in his career. Had a five hit game. Last time was August of 2009 in Detroit. Runner goes. And Hughes has a stolen base. Since Dan Heron left the game, the Twins have gotten 11 hits. Oh, that's that bullpen problems that the Angels had last year. And we saw it here this afternoon. And Spam pitch down and got a piece of it. <laughs> and Gardy one hand grabs it. And flips it into the stands. First half of this game was about as ugly as it could get for the Twins. They didn't hit when they had opportunities. Starting pitcher really struggled. And it looked like this was a lost ball game until the fifth inning. Well, when you never give up. No. You never give up. And that shows the character of, uh, I think, this ball club. It's early in the season. A lot of things, you know, you want to go your way, but. Uh, Perseverance, you just keep battling. Here's Carroll, a single, two walks. Struck out against Thompson with Span, the then go ahead runner, at second base and two out. So Thompson's day started on a high note, but he's had nothing but trouble here in the eighth. Tigers beat the Rays 7 to 2 this afternoon. Breaking ball misses. To the game, the Angels head to New York. The Rangers come in here right now. They're leading Seattle 5 2 in the ninth. Bill Nathan's pitched in back to back games. Don't know whether he's going to be asked to get the save or not. Bounce to the right side. Good eighth inning for the Twins. They score four times. They'll take a three run lead to the ninth inning. Stay tuned for the Gander Mountain weekend weather update for Twins Territory.
big ball game for the Twins. There's the game reset. The Angels had the Twins down six nothing, and then uh, somebody gave the Twins a pretty good halftime speech. All right. <laughs> Justin Morneau with a big two run go ahead home run in the eighth inning to give the Twins a lead. But uh, hey, some guys had their hitting shoes on here today. 20 hits for the Twins. And Matt Katz in a save situation. He picked up his first save in last night's ball game. Looking to get save number two. 15 pitches for Caps last night, eight for strikes. The face Pujols, Hunter, and Trumbo, the three, four, and five batters, the extra runs the Twins were able to add on after the Morno home run. Significant for Caps here, especially with this man at the plate. Now, the Twins have done a marvelous job of pitching to Pujols so far. Just one single. And he hasn't really centered anything the entire series yet. There's a strike on the outside corner. Well, I hope he does it in New York. That's where the Angels are <laughs> headed. Up high and tight, two and one. A lot of matchups uh, in the National League, of course, Caps with the Pirates and the Nationals. Past a reaching Carroll, and Pujols has his second hit of the series. Caps in last night's ball game again 15 pitches he did give up a hustle double to Torrey Hunter but able to retire the other three batters he faced and the Twins won that ball game six to five here is Hunter who rolled a double to center field it, the ball died in the grass in front of span and Hunter showing great hustle got a double. Down the middle of the strike. Now, Caps, it was said this morning, threw a few of those split finger pitches he's been working on as a changeup. And the one that Hunter hit looked like he was fooled and it had a little downward dip to it. You'd expect maybe from a split finger pitch. So maybe Hunter got his base hit on one of the splitters that Caps has been working on. Painting the outside corner. Well, Caps is on the X. Matt Caps at his finest right there. Just, you know, he'll pick both sides of the plate. Last year had some injuries, ball left up in the strike zone, but he's healthy now. And when he's on, he'll keep that ball down in the strike zone. See if he can get a ground ball right here. Had an account 0 and 2 on Torrey Hunter. Driven to right foul. Run lead is great, but this is a pretty important hitter because if Hunter reaches somehow, then the powerful Trumbo comes to the plate representing the tying run. So you need to get it out here. Caps is ahead, 0 2. Gotta believe he's. Two strikes to Hunter. Fastball clocked at 92. Cats fastball slider and then that now that split finger. Matt picked up his 125th major league save last night. Up the middle. Oh, it oh. hits the bag. And Pujols will go to third. So Hunter. Who hit one similar to that that rolled into center field for a double gets a big break there It could have been certainly one out might have been two and it hit the second base bag Boy, as a middle infield or you'd like to get that ball before it gets to the bag But the bag comes into play Luke Hughes Jamie Carroll trying to get over there gets by caps behind him and then right there, Luke Hughes playing the ball behind the bag, and the ball ends up skipping on the bag and squirts into short left field. 
So Pujols with a line drive single and Hunter with a bleeder and here's Trumbo representing the tying run. He homered to start the scoring leading off the second inning. 29 home runs as a rookie last year. Playing in his first game of this series. Trumbo's kind of got that Jim Tomey thing going pointing the bat out towards center field. Missing inside ball one. Fouled back. Caps has eaten up Torrey Hunter's bat twice, and yet Hunter is two for two against him. You can see the ball down right off the end of the bat, but hit in the right spot. Caps couldn't get it. One and one from Caps to Trumbo. Base hit left field and Trumbull will reach as the tying run Hunter round second through hole scores and a wild ball game it's now 10 to 8 and the ninth inning starts with three straight singles that Trumbull for getting a base hit his second RBI of the ball game and his second hit and now Vernon Wells and pitching coach Rick Anderson out to talk to Matt Caps. So three hits to start the ninth inning. Nobody out. And the lead's been trimmed back to two. Vernon Wells with hits his last two times up. Behind Wells, Kayaspo. And then Ionetta. I just look and the Angels haven't hit into a double play yet in this series. One out this inning has been hard to come by. And you want two on one pitch? Yeah, why All not? Right. Lead runner, the pitch up high, ball one. How about a one hopper to Valencia standing right on the bag? Well, that would be nice. <laughs> Fourteen pitches for Caps. He's still looking for his first out of the ninth. Two strikes and a ball. You see Will Gordon Wells upsetting himself right there. He missed his pitch. Caps needs to keep the ball down and ball leaving up a little bit in the strike zone. Let's watch the reaction of the hitter, Vernon mm -hmm. Wells. Oh boy. Want the pitch down in that bottom row. In the That's strike how you zone. get the ground ball. Mm -hmm. 
One and two to Vernon Wells. And a foul off a leg. Yeah, that the two seamer that ran in on Wells. Rubbing up a new baseball. Hoping this is the one that will get the ground ball. Eighteen runs, thirty three hits. That's enough for an afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, that's enough. One and two again to Wells. Back and out of play. Angels have hit into four double plays. Wells is wrapped into one of them on the season. A little slider down and away. Keep it down. Much Mauer move. Going inside. There Brown it is. To turn. turn it. Valencia to Hughes. Hughes hesitates. Safe at first. A uh, hesitation at second base. And it costs the Twins a double play. Ron Gardenhire spoke of it this morning. Defensively, that's been his biggest concern this year. Double plays that have not been turned. Uh, Taylor made double play right there. Hughes had a little trouble between the rotation, get the ball out of the glove to the hand, a little right there, and a bang bang play. And Vernon Wells stays out of the double play right there. You see that? Just a little bit gives Wells one extra step, and he needed it to beat it out. Let's take another look. Is he safer out? He's out. He's out. Ooh. So Hunter goes to third. Only one out in the inning, and Kiaspo at the plate. I almost got my call. Almost got my call. Actually, I did. Kiaspo two for 15 on the season, one for four in the game. Away ball one. Got to keep an eye on Wells too, because even though you know he might steal a base, he's got pretty good speed. 99 career stolen bases. Angels have already stolen five bases in this ball game. Popped up. Stay in here. Mauer back. Yeah, just over the screen. Well, that's an out in Oakland. <laughs> Remember last year, I think it was last year, Mauer, in a similar spot, was able to reach around the yeah, net. Yep, over here and, by the uh, Twins dugout. Make a catch for an out behind the screen. That one hit either the screen or the cable supporting it, making it a dead ball. One and one. Yep, right around there last year. Joe reached around that screen. Twins need an out right here. Up by two. Tapper to first. Out there, and that's it. Harmony getting the out at second base, but now Wells advances into scoring position. 
Well, he did the right thing right there and almost, you know, also not throwing the ball because where he's at, he throws that ball to Carroll. He's got to really make sure it's on the infield side. Well, here's Ionetta. Take a look right here. Parmley gets the out at first. The second out thought about throwing, but decided not to. And Wells does get into second base. The tying run now at second base for Ionetta. Ionetta with hits his last two times up last night. His first plate appearance of this game. Couple of runs have scored here in the ninth. Maurer shifts to the right, catches ball one. Twenty two pitches for Caps. Because the angel catches all of them last year hit 192. And a 13 at bats, and he's already picked up five hits. One and one to the angel catcher. Tapper in front of Valencia. He's got to hurry. Throwing on the run. Got him. And the Twins, by their fingernails, win the series. And hold on. Nice play by Danny Valencia. On the move. Had to throw and put something on it. And just gets INN at first base. That's oh, a wild game. A wild game. It was 6 <laughs> nothing. The Twins end up winning 10-9. Another one run win for the Twins. A very important 30 hour period, if you will, or 24 hour period, Anthony LaPanta, and the Twins up winning both games. And a much different feel as they walk out of Target Field here this afternoon. Back to back wins for Minnesota. We'll show you how they came from behind. Show you how pitchers need to cover first and hear from Guardy next on Twins Live.